All right, all right, new game, boys. We're playing Genially Clue. Yes, the menu doesn't have many music, so I also thought the game didn't uh, was muted for some reason. The menu music did not have any. Oh, I said menu. Kind of thought said. Kind of thought I said many music. Uh, new game. Well, I've never played this game before, so I can't do that game plus. Just let me know how the game volume is. If you want it louder, I can adjust. Totally normal, boys. I mean, he's dressed like that because it's raining. That's totally normal. It might be weird if he actually was carrying, like, I don't know, a rocket launcher. Now, that's creepy. More maybe awesome. Danger, no swimming. I'm shocked his hat is still on. Nah, that's what the uh, the umbrella is for. It blocks the rain and the wind. He's technically not breaking the law. He's not swimming. Still looks normal. How does umbrella not break? Like we see in the wind, it's n uh, the how the rain is falling. The wind might not be that strong. Oh, he took it down. He took out a radio. Oh, I see. Damn, I'm smart, boys. <clears throat> Yo, it's the case of... It's the case 5 in Phoenix, right? Can you believe I solved the first puzzle in first try? Yo, man, what is this? Is the Loch Ness Monster? way to give up your position all right down we go did you play this game before no man first try um maybe not immediately when it comes out because honestly i've never actually completed resident evil 4 myself i've always like backseat game did with a friend playing it but I've never actually played it through uh, it myself. So it comes out like on Friday, I believe. What? Who? Oh, I must have dozed off. Perhaps we need a spot of tea to wake us up. Oh, his typewriter looks like a sneaker. You guys seeing it? Like the buttons are the are the laces. <laughs> no? Okay, it's just me. What do you say, Rufus? Yes, yes, quite right. Better get back to work. This book won't write itself. Maybe I should start somewhere easier. I'll come back to the prologue later. The sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. Yeah, type on your sneaker-looking typewriter. 
To the casual observer, Arthurton seemed like any other small, quiet town. It was nestled in a valley between two mountains, lined by lustrous forests, and perched on the edge of a pristine lake. Oh man, I, for Main Street, I forgot I was um, tweeted out I'm streaming. Coffee. Luckily, I have a button on my stream deck that auto-tweets <laughs> that I'm streaming. I made a button for that. <laughs> Like a custom command. There we go, I tweeted I'm streaming. It had schools, a college, a church, and a police station. It even had a museum no one ever visited. It was the kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. Typical, maybe even forgettable. The Great Placebo? But there was one thing in Arthurton that was unlike any other town in the whole world. What does that mean? Like you only believe it's there? <laughs> Actually, it was a girl. Her name was... Jenny LeClue. And she was the world's greatest detective. Finkelstein residence. Oh, hello, Glenda. Yes, he said he might ring. Okay, patch me through then. Richard? Yes, I got it. I did, and my answer is no. I understand that. But, we, yes, of course, but, no, 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 nothing is settled. I'm not going to do it. It goes against everything my books stand for. He does want to no, sell out? Not yet, but, if I could just, please, listen to what I'm saying. Man, are you guys not seeing this? It looks like a sneaker. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm controlling it. Um, am I supposed to... Alright, see here. There's chapter one. Off it goes. Oh, it got me achievement for it! A pencil pusher. Nice. Ooh, what's this? Found gallery art. Also got me achievement. Um, all right. I guess it's from his publisher here. Dear Arthur, hope all is well. Afraid I've got bad news, old chum. There's no easy way to say it, so I attached the latest book sales number. Oh, ooh, uh, oh, we're really going downhill here. Nowadays, young readers want more mystery and danger. You're losing them with Jenny. Jason's increasingly timid and repetitive adventures. One bit of good news, it's too late... Well, it's too late for the stores to cancel their orders for the next book. So we're going to give you one last go and see if you can breathe some life into that old girl. She's still young. We want you to try a proper murderous mystery. Start killing people off. Add some drama. The bottom line is, if you don't step it up, I'm afraid it's the case of Jenny and the last hurrah. I'm not a murderer. Alright, flip. Flip! In other positive news, someone from a real newspaper finally reviewed your last book. Wouldn't know a good story if it bit you on the rump. All right, Jenny Clue and the Missing Marmalade Sandwich. All right, all right, already headline there. <laughs> missing Marmalade Sandwich? Uh, uh, it was the dad. Uh, <laughs> I took the worst bits out. I imagine all of this might come a bit of a shock. 
but we've got to move with the times. Throw in a murder or two, a dash of real strategy, and who knows, maybe you've got one great story left in you. I'll ring you, I'll ring you later to discuss. Sorry about your career. Chin up though, eh? Richard Inkwell. P.S. Squash next week? At least you'll have some time to work on that backhand soon. Hmm. So I believe we're playing the story as he writes it type of game. Can I type? No? Well, let's go to chapter one, boys. Uh, the sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. Arthurton. To the casual observer, Arthurton. Wow. I can't... <laughs> Ar Arthurton seemed like any other small, quiet town. It was nestled in a valley between two mountains, lined in by. Didn't I read? Didn't he read this? Um. Oh, exit. There we go. You don't understand what you're asking for. You want me to turn Jenny's world upside down, kill off my characters, and destroy everything I've built over the last thirty years? Fine. Well, it doesn't have to be characters. That's like. It could be new ones. I'll give you what you want. But I warn you, I'm a stream of consciousness writer. And you have unleashed my fury. I mean, come on, guy. You're a writer. You can just add new characters that just happen to die. <laughs> Good day, sir. <clears throat> like a lot of mystery cartoons does that, right? Boring. Predictable. Blah. Or, like, whenever someone dies, it's, it's always like characters that's not part of the main cast, but the main cast has to solve why that character died. Well, if it's murder they want, it's murder they'll get. You see the shoe? You seeing it? <laughs> It should have been another perfect day in Arthurton. Arthurton was different, and nothing would ever be the same again. To begin with, Jenny LeClue was dead. Oh, come on. Why the main character? But I guess that's the mystery in it. What led up to this? Ooh. Her skin was pale, her eyes glassy and frozen. What cruel fate had befallen our beloved detective? Oh, there's some green stuff in her mouth, and blood is trickling out. She was drinking something, so she was drinking some green goo before she got her head bashed in. No, oh, nope, she was zombie all along. Oh, no. Never move the victim. Oh, I guess t t test. Mrs. Leclue, she's doing it again. Jenny Leclue. You are a dead body. Dead bodies don't talk. <gasps> Julie LeClue, former detective. It's the mom. But he's doing it wrong. As wonderful as it would be if all cadavers were so talkative, we must deduce the cause of death without their help. With only the evidence laid before us, we build a picture from the fragments left behind. We collect clues, interpret the data, and solve our puzzle one piece at a time until it feels as if the victim is speaking to us. But Jenny is right, Jonathan. You mustn't disturb the crime scene. Vital evidence could be lost. Sorry, Mrs. LeClue. Okay, you've all had a chance to study the body? Who can postulate how she met her demise? Ooh, uh, me, me! I think it was an accident? Yeah. She obviously wasn't looking where she was going. So she slipped on the wet floor and cracked her head open like an egg. Nah, I don't think so. And then she bled to death. Really? How can you tell? Well, there's a giant pool of blood around her head. Yeah, I know. You know, <clears throat> this guy, right? He sounds like he's AI generated. He doesn't speak like a proper human. I was being sarcastic. Oh. Actually, you're both wrong. What? It was cold-blooded murder. 
Murder? Don't be ridiculous. Where's the murder weapon? There's no evidence anyone else was even here. Oh, yes, there is. It was murder. And I can prove it. Jenny had read all the books. She'd absorbed all her mother's teachings. But there was nothing quite like getting your hands dirty. How many people get the chance to solve their own murder? The first step in any good deduction was collecting evidence. Oh, I see that, but that's also something under her head. Seemingly insignificant details. I'm not talking about the blood. Piece of the puzzle. First, I'll search the crime scene for clues. Why does Jenny's voice also sound a bit AI generated sometimes? Then she'd analyze the data and finally deduce the real cause of death. Maybe not AI generated, but like some kind of like filter. All right, I see something here. Oh, that's art. Wow, great. <laughs> I can see more here. Oh, this is for the art gallery, okay? Okay. Um... Oh, okay. She's drinking coffee, but there's some green stuff on the top of the coffee, which matches what is on her mouth. So can I use that? What a waste of perfectly good coffee. Jenny's love for coffee was almost <laughs> as strong as her passion for crime solving. Chalky green residue on the rim. <laughs> Smells like burnt matches. Just like what's on her mouth! The victim has a green smudge on her lips. It's not lipstick. There's no doubt the victim lost a lot of blood. The glasses? I don't see anything on the right glasses, but... Without her trusty bifocals, Jenny couldn't see the nose in front of her face. They were her window to the world, and the lens through which she focused her keen detective vision. Alright, that's an idea how she can't see shit uh, without her glasses. Jenny's blue sweater was scruffy and quite uncomfortable, but her grandmother had knitted it, and so it was her favorite. The more it itched, the closer she felt to her. Boots. Approximately eight sizes too big. And covered in mud. So she's wearing oversized boots? Oh, more art. Water. The floor is wet and slippery, but also immaculately clean. Oh yeah, she's right. You got muddy boots, but there's no sign of she actually steps on the clean water. Uh, what are we missing? It wasn't Jenny's style to wear accessories, but this hair clip was the exception. Its function as a lockpick had saved Jenny from a long night trapped in her school locker. She'd worn it ever since. So yeah. Seen enough. Time to wrap this case up. So according to what clues we found, she couldn't have slipped, or else there would have been like a muddy water. Jenny was a meticulous record keeper, noting every relevant clue in her trusty journal. A great detective knew that solving a mystery was simply a matter of connecting the dots. I'm certain this wasn't a mere accident. Now I just need to prove it. All right, How what? do I know the victim didn't slip? Make deduction. The victim's boots are filthy. They should have left big muddy footprints on the floor. So where are they? Either someone washed away her footprints, or she was carried here. Ooh. Okay, that proves she didn't slip. So how did she actually die? What was the real cause of death? Okay, so... She got poisoned by something, but that doesn't explain the pool of blood then. Well, we, I believe this is the cause she died. <laughs> coffee equal deadly but delicious. Green residue in the bottom of the victim's coffee cup. Oh, that could be true. Yeah, yeah. But 
then she read to fall real hard to like break her skull open. It smells of burnt matches. Phosphorus. Also found in common garden fertilizer. Yo man, she was drinking poop. <laughs> green mark is on the victim's lips her coffee was spiked with fertilizer someone clearly wanted her dead but she was nowhere near tables ah, see the case of the dead lab assistant gone before her time was it poison yes a blow to the head yes oh an accident certainly not no footprints in an unshattered mug? She was killed somewhere else and carried here. This is the story of a scorned ex-lover. Yo, man, she got double tapped. She died from poison and then someone busted her head and carried her here. Jenny? The gardener enacting his revenge. Jenny? A deadly brew of fertilizer and caffeine coursing through the veins. That's quite enough, thank you. What happens to the gardener? <laughs> oh, he's interested now. Is this gonna be on the test? Remember class, even the smartest criminals make mistakes. This is how we catch a killer. But what's the point of all this? Yeah, there hasn't been a murder in Arthurton in years. Every town has a dark side, even Arthurton. By doubting, we are led to question. And by questioning, we arrive at the truth. Okay, that's all for today. Don't forget, next class is our field trip to the morgue. So have a light lunch. I really want to record this, but I don't think my recording drive have space. Jenny. Like, let me double check just to be sure. Can I always just save the stream? Yeah, but it doesn't have the same quality, you know? Sometimes the Twitch VOD has, like, lower quality. Like, it's, it's based on my stream quality. Um, but when I record, it's based on my, like, local quality. I can try to record at the same time, see what happens. All right. Also, let me know if you hear crackles, because I think I solved it. It's something about the uh, audio quality, like hertz, whatever. Well, it's not really a heavy graphics game, so it wouldn't be much of a problem, but we'll see. But it's always good to have like a local file. Anyway. That's why they're here at Gumbolt. <laughs> Got he! I just figured we all had places to go. Speaking of which... And where are you off to, young lady? I'm a dead body mom, remember? Dead bodies don't tell. See ya! Wait, before you go, I have something for you. Cool! What is it? If I told you, that would spoil the fun, wouldn't it? The LeCruz didn't simply hand each other presents. Okay... I see a bow on her boots. And a jar that's filled with jam. They hid them. It was a family tradition, and Jenny had developed a sixth sense for finding them. With her trusty magnifying glass at her side, nothing eluded her. I see one there! A new journal! To Jenny, there was nothing better than the aroma of a fresh leather notebook. It smelled like mystery. Without missing a beat, she did what any detective worth their salt would do. She decorated it. I love nerds. Oh wait, I'm making it? <gasps> oh, that's so cool. That looked like something Greta would do on her journal. Shit, it is though. <laughs> I wouldn't like Decorated with I love nerds, but I would probably do something similar. <laughs> I can chase the sticker. Oh shit! <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> All right, let's just keep I love nerds. It's like the most the fanciest one here. Oh, I can add. Oh shit! All right. Oh, I, I know what I should have done. Okay.
I want to change. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, a, a new journal meant new adventures. She imagined all the thrilling cases that would soon fill its pages. And on the first page, her mother had written an inscription. A great detective never gives up. Love, Mom. Oh, don't tell me her mom dies and we have to pick up the mystery from there. Find a map, keep it here. CEO. I guess that's me. Oh, I had to choose a tune for the mystery man. Okay, I chose something normal. I thought I just like, like oh, what's the impression here? Wait, what happened to my stickers? It's already gone. <laughs> They're great. All right, let's add. Okay, so I have an idea here. So I wanted to add this like here. Oh, and then add. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. It's strange I can't like select anything. Except doing that. I can't change. It's like it's stuck on that point. But yeah, good enough. For now. I love it. Thanks, Mom. Jenny, I wanted to talk about My death. Um to say uh Somewhere in the back of Jenny's highly caffeinated brain, an alarm bell was ringing. How her mum was hesitating. Oh my god. What? what could be causing her to act so out of character? Uh, tab. Alright. Tab. Tab. Okay, it's not letting me select anything, so I'm just gonna hold. Missing ring? Furrowed brow. She's getting a divorce! Jenny saw it coming from a mile away. Her mother was about to get... Emotional. <laughs> I've really gotta go. No, Jenny, wait. I need your help. What? Really? Jenny couldn't believe her ears. It was extremely unusual for her mother to ask for help. It must be something very important. I need your help. Packing my stuff, because I'm leaving you. <laughs> Tracing the steps of a deranged killer? A cold case that only someone with Jenny's expertise could solve? I misplaced the student's essays on decapitation. See if you can find them for me before you leave. I have to run. And pack my wow. stuff. Wow, the case of the misplaced papers. Are you sure you want to trust me with such a complex task? I have no doubt you'll be able to find them. They're around here somewhere. Jenny was unsure if her mother was unable to detect sarcasm or just really good at ignoring it. Fine, we'll help her. Okay, Mom. I'll find them before I leave. On one condition. Yes? You have to let me help grade them. One of Jenny's favorite pastimes was grading papers. Nothing pleased her more than giving a big shiny F to an overconfident student. Don't push her luck. Please? Hmm. Okay. Yes! Find the papers and go straight home. But I'm meeting Keith tonight. No buts, remember? <laughs> find the papers, go straight home, and you won't find me there. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm still feeling the effects of being poisoned for mm. your class. Well then, I have the perfect antidote. You're staying with your cousin this weekend, and you still need to pack. <gasps> this again. Look, I've considered your offer, Mom, and I'm going to have to decline. I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'll be back late tonight. There's meatloaf in the fridge. Question motive. All right. Late again? What are you up to? Jenny LeClue, it's been a difficult week. Could you please just do what you're told for once and stop asking questions? Fine. And try to stay out of trouble. When do I ever get into trouble? Um, how long has this show been on? Like the book series? How many years? 12? What did the author say? 30 years? Well, since she's still a child, I don't think she did, right, like, the time was... Uh. Hmm. Examine jar. 
One of Jenny's earliest memories was making raspberry jam with her mom. It's the perfect substitute for blood in class demonstrations. And better tasting than the pig's blood the textbook recommends. Ooh, scrap. Awesome. Looking rather trim today, Ethan. New diet? What's the matter? Lost your funny bone? Ha! Check if you got a new sticker. Oh! In case of misplaced papers. Why does my stick? Why is my sticker in front here? Oh. Uh, let's see. No, I haven't gotten any new. Oh, I see something. Becoming a great detective took more than book smarts. You needed real life experience. And Jenny was always on the lookout for a chance to get her hands dirty. And I see something here. Is those the missing pa term papers. You can tell by the terrible handwriting and erroneous conclusions. Mom must have put them behind the chalkboard. Is there more we're missing? Oh. Please do not touch. Hmm. Someone must be running an experiment. Gross. Pretty soon it's gonna sprout legs. Someone's not. Journal updated. All right. Some scoring string green liquid gross. All right. Mom was acting pretty weird today. No wonder it's been a year, but it still hurts. So they got divorced like a year ago? Or something? I don't know. I don't know their family story. But that's also part of the mystery. Oh, I can move it? Oh, there they are. Found you. Time to get out of here. We're going straight home. Journal says. Case closed. Oh, I think you're right. I think we actually put these stickers on this page for somehow, somehow. What the fuck? There we go. So the first, the first stickers I put on came on this page. Well, at least I can decorate. That's a gold star, baby. around the room one last time. Was she ready to leave? Yes, I think we got everything we needed. Jenny looked around the room one last time. Was no, she ready to leave? <laughs> I selected the wrong button. I really like the art style of this game. She wasn't really dead. That would be silly. No, Jenny was alive and well and ready for another perfect day in Arthurton. Oh, so she believed. He's gonna walk home. No need to rush. What the? Damn. What a mess. I should investigate. What? The same. Oh, it's the same. Uh, capital A? Yeah. Um. Oh, no. What's going on? Why can't... Oh, fuck no. Uh, 
Um, hang on, Greta needs my help. All right, back. No, it was just very quickly. I just have to say something that, uh... Jenny had an instinct for sorting treasure from trash. To the untrained eye, this was just a discarded piece of an old postcard. But to Jenny, it was a mystery waiting to be solved. I should keep my eyes open for any other pieces. The puzzling postcard! What? Why? Why a postcard? The notice board was awash with flyers, personal ads, and the occasional piece of gum. I'm amazed anyone can find anything on here. Fortunately, Jenny had a useful trick to use in a situation like this. Mom always says a great detective eliminates the noise. Focus on the details, and you'll find clarity in the chaos. Okay, back. So we're tr God is trying to set up. Uh, to connect her old 3DS to our Wi-Fi and we're trying to write in the Wi-Fi password and it just says invalid these are invalid settings I'm like what are you on about this is weird so we're just, it's just telling us I'm tapping Can you, can you, come on, work. Game, I'm pressing. Why won't you listen? Does 3DS have WPA2 password thing? No, it's WEP. That's the thing. Um, so it won't let me press that thing. It tells me to press. I like how when you say quit, she's dead. Let me tr Let me restart the game. Chaos. <laughs> Seems like the game is a bit buggy. Oh no, it's doing it again. It won't let me do anything. <laughs> no! Man, the game has great controller support. What? Fine, we're playing with mouse and keyboard. Oh shit, how will you survive? But the thing is, this game doesn't support mouse even, so it's only keyboard. Let's just play the game. I wonder if anyone else reads this junk. Hold on, what's this? Curfew. Stay oh, safe. No, <clears throat> they extended curfew hours again. 9 p.m. to sunrise. That's ridiculous. But necessary. Power outages had become a regular occurrence in town. It was dangerous to be wandering around after dark. It won't be long before we need a permit to go out at all. Hmm. There's something here. <clears throat> Whoa, new sticker! Oh, so that's how we find stickers. Is this a sticker? Alright, no. Alright, exit. Alright, commands for the VTuber thing doesn't seem to be working. Which is weird because they worked before, but now they're not. I don't know. Maybe the program needs to be restarted too. At least it's wrecked into your face. Yeah, hang on. All right, it got and restarted. Enough lollygagging. Let's explore. We love you, Dean Strawberry. All right. Bonfire celebration. Signs and decorations adorned the entire campus. A party to celebrate the Dean's impending retirement. Look 
Left. Left. I said left, damn it. What part of left are you having trouble with? My left or your left? My left. Obviously, I mean my left. Why would I mean your left? So you want me to move it the other way? Yes. Nothing would make me happier. If you're not careful, we're gonna have bronze brains all over the floor. They seem... busy. I should probably lead them to it. That's probably a clue for something later. Oh, that is Dean Strasberry. Hello, Mr. Strasberry. How are you today? Less drop. Less Strasberry. Jolly gentlemen, the Dean was often seen shaking hands and kissing babies around town. He's also Mom's boss. But more than that, he was her loyal friend. What do you think, Jenny? The Dean had dedicated his life to Gumbold, and the townspeople had spared no expense in their tribute to him. Quite a striking resemblance, Mr. Strasbury. It's a scary thing, Jenny. Retirement. Oh, that is scary. Great excuse for a party, though. <laughs> what will you do when you're no longer the Dean? I've been trying not to think about it. This place won't be the same without you. Things change, Jenny. Time marches on, and we must do our best to adapt. It's going to be difficult, but I'm sure we will get through it. What do you mean, we? Do you think they made my belly too big? <laughs> be honest. It might be all those bronze pancakes, Mr. Strasbury. <laughs> Your man, your statue eats more than you. <laughs> <coughs> no legacy is so rich as honesty. <laughs> you are a clever one, Jenny LeClue. Speaking of which... Ah, he took that lightly. Have you been practicing your detective skills? Have I? Of course, always. <laughs> well then, I have a challenge for you. <laughs> Find out why my statue is so fat. <laughs> I bet you can't guess what I ate for breakfast. At last, a real challenge for Jenny. You call that? Hmm. A fiendishly difficult puzzle that would take all her wits to solve. <laughs> Respect your elders. <sighs> well, okay. Anything for you, Mr. Strasbury. Oh, how wonderful. But first, I need to ask you a few questions. The interrogation of Dean Strasbury. Hmm, let's see. Uh, this one. Gumball logo. Basketball game today? Number one fan? The Dean was a big fan of the Gumball Moonbeams. And not just because his son was a prominent figure on the team. Well, a bench warmer anyway. Oh, I see some dust on his bow tie. Powder. Ooh, dandruff. No hair. Sugar. It can't be dandruff. He has no hair. <laughs> Your man has dandruff. Is his like his uh, beard? <laughs> I have a hunch it's powdered sugar. All right, something behind. It. Oh yeah, gallery art. Mmm, spoon. Like he accidentally put a spoon in his pocket instead of his pen. It's got a coffee stain on it. Hmm, coffee. So he had coffee. What M mean? Oh. Ooh. G game? Game? <laughs> this game is not stable at all, guys! <clears throat> is this game broken? I'm here, I'm here, I'm trying to enjoy game, but game keeps dropping me. Game says no. Like, I can do to, I can go to options and shit, but 
It just stops. So it's not a controller issue. It's just the game issue itself. <laughs> Play Genshin instead. I actually plan on doing that on Sunday. Donut? Yeah, it might be a good guess. Coffee and donuts. Solid gold! His watch is slow. That's unlike the Dean. He's usually very punctual. Hmm. I guess that's a clue. <clears throat> Your watch is 45 minutes slow. Is it? Oh my. That explains why there was no cheesecake left in the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> my head's not screwed on today. Thank goodness you noticed, or I'd be late for my meeting with your mother. <laughs> oh, really? She didn't mention anything to me. Oh, well. Oh, shit. Of um, she wouldn't. It's nothing important. She can call. You can call me. That daddy soon. <laughs> Why are you meeting then? <coughs> it's just. Um. She's helping me finalize my. Ma ma marriage propo for, proposal? Uh, I mean, um. <laughs> Your party? Yes, that's it. My retirement party. Thank you. Are you okay, Mr. Strasbury? Of course. Now let me just fix my watch before I forget. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, he has a ring. Shiny gold! Class ring? Maybe club or fraternity. I don't know Latin. Looks like Latin. Your ring sure looks old. It was made for my grandfather. He passed it down to my father, who passed it down to me. And when the time comes, I'll pass it on to my son. The Strasbury family had been champions of education for generations. What does the inscription mean? Knowledge itself is power. The inquisitive spirit is a mighty thing, Jenny. And nothing is as important as the truth. As he wiggle his mustache. Ooh, he's been stepping on green stuff. Oh, grass. For the Dean, being covered in plant life was not unusual. His work as a botanist was renowned. Looks like you're carrying some extra baggage today, Mr. Strasbury. <laughs> and I'm not talking about your stomach. <laughs> Well, I do have a lot on my mind. I was referring to your legs. Oh, thank you. I have been doing my daily calisthenics. No, I mean the sticky stuff on your pants. What? <laughs> Not that kind of sticky stuff, Mr. Strasberry. Oh! Oh, you mean the gray ears! I've been working on a new orchid hybrid in my greenhouse. They're beautiful. But the leaves are quite clean. He was quite shocked to hear some sticky stuff on his pants. What do you think he initially thought we meant? I will say, I am looking forward to spending more time in the dirt. Anyway, maybe we should examine his crutch jam. Alright, there's some here. He's missing a button! <laughs> Blood? No, it's jam. The dean didn't button his shirt properly. It looks like a blood stain, but the seeds indicate otherwise. Hmm, maybe he had a like he escaped when he ate last donut. Okay, it didn't crash. of note cards poked out of the Dean's pocket. What's he keeping so close to his chest? You've been making a lot of notes, Mr. Strasbury. Oh, I was intending to make a speech on Saturday. Why have you scratched out so much of it? Your mother suggested I keep it short, and quite right, too. I must have rewritten it 20 times by now. I just can't seem to find the right words. So, what do you think, Jenny? Can you guess what I had for breakfast? Sure, Mr. Strasbury. I've got everything I need to solve this mystery. Could be like waffle with powdered sugar and jam. What did Dean, what did eat? Dean eat for breakfast? 
So we got these two. No, wait, 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 wait. Can I cancel this? How do I cancel this? I cannot cancel this. Fuck. <laughs> I'm meant to say bow tie. Well, uh, whatever. Let's, let's keep at it. How? That doesn't quite add up. Let me give this some more thought. Yeah, bow tie and. There we go. Oh. Jam on his shirt and powdered sugar on his tie. The evidence points strongly to the Dean's breakfast consisting of one, maybe two donuts. Damn, we solved it. Like a fucking boss. What else can I tell about the Dean's morning? The Dean's pocket watch is an hour slow. Oh, hey, Kenjo Maxon. Welcome to stream. I didn't see you there. Uh, this, this, and this. <clears throat> the Dean had neglected to wind his pocket watch. The act of a distracted man. This resulted in his whole routine being thrown off. Which might explain why he has a spoon in his pocket instead of a pen. Well, we're good at solving puzzle, boys. Hey, Sparta. You had a donut for breakfast. Yes? I'm guessing... Strawberry. Strawberry. <laughs> How did you know? That part was easy. You always have donuts for breakfast. But something else caught my attention. Oh? I think you have something on your mind, Mr. Strasberry. You are usually a picture of precision and punctuality. But today, there's a spoon in your pocket and your shirt button is undone. My, my. You really are a Leclou. Your father would be so proud. Is the dad dead or something? Thanks. Well, I should be going. I'm meeting your son by the lake. <laughs> and I'm meeting your mother <laughs> in the library. <laughs> in the library? You know what happens in the library, right? Oh, man. What a small world this is. Too small. A perfectly small world with everything in its right place. Who would want to change that? Pardon? Nothing. See you on Saturday. Oh, yes. Until we meet again, Jenny LeClue. Journal updated. Curfew at 9 p.m.? When will this madness end? Let's decorate it with a new sticker we found. It's a mystery game. We're playing as Jenny Lee Clue. Actually, we're playing out a story that someone is writing. Uh, about Jenny the Clue, who is the master detective. Uh, so far, we got to find some papers for her mom, and we're on our way home. And we're just doing stuff on the way home. So we're not that far into the game. We had some issues, like technical issues. That's mostly the game's fault. Well, that's not creepy at all. In her short time as a detective, Jenny had learned never to ignore a ringing phone. Well, let's check it out then. Hello? The dog barks loudest before the dawn. What? CJ, is that you? The dog barks loudest before the dawn. Really? This again? It's me, Jenny. We don't need to do this. I have 
have no idea who you are, and I know no one by that name. The dog barks loudest before the dawn. Fine. Horse. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a cook a five-course meal. Good. The wind blows strongly from the east. The wind blows strongly from the east. Watched pot? Uh, a watched pot feels very self-conscious. I, I, am I just picking? Excellent. The evening sky is full of fireflies. <laughs> goldfish. <laughs> the absent-minded goldfish swims into the blender. Ah, Jenny, it is you. My God. Of course it is. I need to meet with you right away. Okay. Where do you want to meet? This place will do. Marty, we need to go back in time. <laughs> Freak. Everyone in town knew that CJ was mad, even dangerous. He's not dangerous. He just doesn't accept things at face value. Sure, he's a bit fixated on extraterrestrials, but at least he's passionate about something. Jenny, Jenny, we need to go back. To the future! CJ and Jenny certainly indulged each other's obsessions. But most of all, CJ treated Jenny like a colleague. And not a little kid. CJ, why did we go through all that if you're right here? Can't be too careful. Are you sure you weren't followed? Who would be following me? Shh! This place is compromised. We don't have long to talk. Why is his phone so much bigger? What? Did you see it happen? What did you want to talk to me about? What? You called me. Did I? Why? Talking to CJ was a bit like navigating a maze. You had a rough idea of where you were headed, but you couldn't be sure you'd ever get there. I'll help you figure it out. All right, let's interrogate um, CJ here. You saw them. That's probably not. Oh. Gallery found. Mm, nothing on his hair. The batch seems to be normal. Oh. Right sleeve. Oh, what is. Oh, the birthday! Whose birthday? How old is CJ? And what does CJ stand for? Is it your birthday, CJ? Birthday? Whose birthday? Thanks, it's birthday. But Kaixen died on his birthday. Assassination? Possibly. Abduction? Almost certainly! CJ, the card? Oh, this. It's for you. Oh, okay, it's Impossible for me. Impossible shot. Died instantly. What? Well, ha happy birthday? Sorry about your dad? No suspects. No human suspects, anyway. So the dad is dead? Thanks, CJ. That's, uh... Thoughtful. I didn't think you'd remember. I know what it's like to lose something important to you. Wait, so is this one year anniversary from the dad's death? Now triple shred and incinerate that card as soon as possible! It's got my fingerprints all over it! Like, if you look here... Oh, fuck. See... So, like she says, no wonder it's been a year, but it still hurts. So it might be that the dad has died a year ago, and CJ is just being weird about it by giving me a birthday card about his death anniversary. <clears throat> All right, what more clues can we find? Oh, Among Us! Yes, Among Us card. Oh, alien Among Us! <laughs> Among Us. What's that sticking out of your sock? Ah! That's what I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> Bro, I can't. I intercepted a secret message. Classified intel. It's proof, Jenny. It's happening again. It's time for us to join the fight. It's time for us to Among go back. Us. Back to the future! 
and they are coming for your pets. Pamphlet he usually makes. It's been professionally printed. Could CJ finally be on to something? Hmm. Hmm? 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 Ooh. Do I need to sp oh, it's just part of a cereal box. Oh. Wow, so cool! A cereal box from another space-time continuum? Nope, just a regular cereal box. It's an ad for a toy. But why? Why would it just be lying there in the trash? <laughs> I don't know, CJ. I'm sorry, CJ. There are still great mysteries out there to solve, but this isn't one of them. Jenny had uncovered why CJ had contacted her, but something else had caught her eye. All right, so we saw that we're missing one more thing. His crotch? No. His belt? No. Like, there's also this, but it's not highlighted. The art style is cute. Yeah, I like it. Uh, mm. There's a rip. No, let's just fold. Hmm. What are we missing? What are we missing? Hmm. Oh. How is this not a clue when it's so obvious? Oh, that's why. Hidden in plain sight. Strange symbols. Cracked glass? Wandering needle. I knew he was hiding something. A compass with strange symbols where the cardinal direction should be. Looks broken. Where did you get that compass? Ah, you spotted it. I knew you would. It belonged to my father. He left it to me to find the truth. He left it to me in the past, where I came from. You're not going to find anything with that. The needle is wandering all over the place. A bit like you. It's searching. No. For what? For them. Magnets. It's this town, Jenny. It's Arthur. They're here, among us. And this proves it. He said it. He said the word. He said the mugus. Or it could just be broken. Could be. I guess we'll never know. So what's the plan now? Library. Research. Oh no, he's also going to the library. Is everyone just gonna meet up with her mom? Very important. Very hush-hush. They let you back in? Not yet. Amogus. This hut now. It wasn't your head that needed covering. No, for disguise. I know, CJ. What is it this time? More UFOs? Radio wave mind control, a globally connected communication network used exclusively to view pictures of cats. Jenny, you sound crazy. <laughs> I'm just preparing my defense for the hearing. Is this because you tried to hypnotize Mrs. Brown's prize poodle? No, that was last week. It's because I peed in the water tower. CJ, that's gross. And this is the thanks I get for saving everyone from the mind control chemicals. He thought his pee could cure air ones of the mind control chemicals. Well, I guess I'll see you later then. But CJ was gone. Was CJ even there? CJ, I know you're standing behind the phone booth. I just watched you walk over there. Oh. No, I'm not. Okay then. Bye. See you later. Journal updated. <clears throat> CJ, secret code. Oh, I need to remember my secret code responses? Damn. Alright. Oh, Ida. Hey! Ah! Damn. That's the third time today. Oops. Hi, Jenny. Great job solving that case today. It's really cute, the way that you and your mom work together. I wish I was that close with my parent. Uh-oh. Enough chit-chat. Got anything new for me? Oh, yes. What's wrong with her mouth? It's it's just huge. This is the real deal, hot off the press. I haven't had a chance to distribute these yet, so keep them to yourself. Ada and Jenny belong to <clears throat> one of the oldest societies in Arthurton. An eclectic band of treasure hunters, collectors, creators, and dealers. Together, they were known as... The Drug Dealers. Sticker Club. Oh, that one. 
for generations, Gumball students had been hiding and finding stickers all over town. Officially, Jenny was too young to join, but she'd found so many stickers on her own that they'd made her an honorary member. Nice. Let's see. Nice crisp edges, rich colors. Thanks. I spent all week making these. If only you spend as much time in your schoolwork, you might not be failing my mom's class. Uh, Jenny thought to herself. It's to celebrate the Dean's retirement. I'm super sad that he's leaving, but... It's a perfect reason to make new stickers. Exactly. Why does it sound like she's in a different recording booth? Oh, we're going on an epic sticker hunt before the Dean's party. You should join us. Whoa, did you hear that? That was weird. Even if Jenny had wanted to join them. And I don't. She knew she'd be stuck with her cousin all weekend. Thanks, but I work alone. But you, you know what, like... <sighs> oh, okay. See you around, Jenny. All right, we got a new sticker. <clears throat> Let's decorate this page with this guy. Sticker Club. He'd be like numbing on this cupcake. Nom 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 nom. And he'd be like, Ooh, I love this cupcake. Ooh, yes, many hearts. He's like, Ooh, yes, I love this cupcake. <laughs> Nice. So they can be hidden anywhere. Ooh. The prompt says something. Nice. I got the game tells me there might be something here. Nowhere, one mile. Stop. Perfect. Hold it right there. It's not perfect. It needs to go a bit more. Right. Okay. Let her go. No, it's gonna. No, oh, it's gonna miss. I was right. Oh dear. That was ominous. Foreshadowing? Detective for hire. Jenny had saved up the whole summer to place an ad in the local paper, but no one had answered it. Until now. What could this new case be? Her imagination ran wild, picturing the possibilities. And so, after helping her mom at Gumboldt College, she hurried to the pier at Lake Nowhere to rendezvous with her new client and crack another thrilling case. Oh, something's here. But where? Oh, here. We're getting so much gallery art. As Jenny neared the edge of the woods. She took out her magnifying glass. <laughs> she heard a sudden strange sound. Right in front of her. Hey, kid. Watch where you're going. Hey, screw you! Your wrench nearly cracked my head open! Oh no! It's not damaged, is it? No! <laughs> That's my lucky wrench! Yeah, lucky it didn't kill me! When's this upgrade gonna be finished anyway? 
Look, kid, I just go where they tell me. Every night, another power surge. Every morning, another part of the grid fry. And I'm out here fixing it. Do I get any thanks? No. What's causing all the outages? At the moment, a little red-headed girl. Now throw me my wrench, kid. Ask more questions. <clears throat> Looks like I have all the leverage. So tell me, what exactly is taking so long with these repairs? Apart from shoddy workmanship, that is. Hey, we're busting out butts to keep your lights on. These lines should be lasting for decades, but they're burning out after just a few weeks. It's the strangest thing. Anyway, toss me my wrench. It's the strangest thing. Yo, man, I'm from New York. But be careful. <laughs> it's a family heirloom. Ask another question. But what could possibly be using that much power? You're killing me, little girl. Arthurton's a tiny town. The mines are practically shut down. So what could it be? Surely someone must know. All I know is I got three more jobs today, and I can't finish any of them without my wrench. So, will you please just give it back already? Yeah, he clearly doesn't know what's going on. He's just fixing it. Fine. I've got bigger fish to fry. <clears throat> Thanks, kid. Oh! There's... A gallery item somewhere. Oh, there he is. I'm enjoying this game so far. How are you guys liking it? As Jenny stepped out of the dark forest, she saw warm sunlight reflecting off the... Cool like, it's a good storytelling and also, like, interactive game. Like, you have a lot of input here. Saturday morning cartoon vibe. Yeah, it's like, it's at the point like Scooby-Doo. Because detective. Keith Stroudsbury. Hello, Keith! Dance like you beat it! Not so much grinding. Oh, Keith, what are you doing? Not everyone saw it, but to Jenny, there was something special about Keith. He's just happy being himself. Nothing seemed to bother him. Not even having to dance in a costume for a dollar an hour. Wow, he's underpaid. But Jenny was not so laid back. Not when it comes to standing up for a friend. Especially her only friend. Let's kick their asses. Jenny's to the rescue. <laughs> Traumatic run over there. Oh, but first. <laughs> Gotta save my friend here. Keith! Enough dancing for one day, don't you? Hey, Jenny. Hello, Susan. Actually, I prefer Susie. Busy laughing while others earn a living, Susan? Not everyone's got your dad's money, I guess. Oh, shit, burn! Jenny, hi! Whoa, did he extend his neck? Tall and handsome, with intense, mysterious eyes. <laughs> How long neck you have, boy? Cool should have been his middle name instead of Tarquin. But Keith was so cool he didn't even mind. Are you a fucking giraffe? Give me one minute. I'm just finishing my Sure. Don't let me interrupt your work. Your neck extension? My shift ends in 15 minutes. I know. I'm early. I'm meeting a client over at the dock. Paid case. Could be big. Real big. Couldn't be as big as her head. <laughs> wow, that's really... Impressive? Maybe. All I care about is keeping this town crime-free. The only crime here is that haircut. <laughs> How is that funny? I don't get it. Back in a minute, Keith. I'll have the usual. Sweet tooth, yeah. Sure, Jenny likes some sugar. There's a splash of milk and a dash of cinnamon. You got it. Because haircuts, by definition, cannot be criminal. <laughs> How about now? Move it to the left a bit. What's he doing up there? Not now, kid. We're busy. Any butter? No, keep going. 
Now. Yes, it's working. Thanks for the explanation Later. of a joke. <laughs> That's what all the fuss is about. Not this guy again. What is that? Whatever it is, is not my music. I know I, I ask, I didn't get it. <laughs> and thanks for the explanation. <laughs> Maybe someone else didn't get why that's funny. Maybe it's jazz. Oh no, not jazz. Shh. I'm trying to listen. You shush. I'm the DJ. I'm in charge. When's this party getting started, boys? Oh, uh, just a few more minutes. Uh, how are we supposed to dance to this? Uh, use your imagination. Station must be interfering with the signal. But there aren't any other stations in Arthurton. Wait, all these wires must be acting as a giant antenna. Jenny listened closely to the mysterious transmission. It was like no other radio broadcast she'd heard before. Hold it steady! Sorry, I'm trying. <laughs> That's just getting worse. You might as well come down. No, wait. I can almost make out what they're saying. It sounds like they're saying numbers. Just like that, the sound faded away. Oh, okay, never mind. What did you do? Yeah, it's no use. Come on. We gotta get this equipment back to the AV department by six. Jenny was so lost in contemplation, she'd almost forgotten the case at hand. My client. I'm supposed to meet her at the dock. Danger. No swimming. Sounds safe. Hmm, how do I get this ladder down? Kick it! Yeah! Just like any video game! I'm getting a kick out of this. You can't see it, but I'm looking at the camera. Well, they didn't mention. They didn't say that the client is below the dock. We're not gonna use the ladder. Are you our client? Aha! Got you this time, you slippery fella. Joe Biden. Oh, shucks! Just another boot. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Humdrum. Oh my! If it isn't little Jenny Leclue, oh, what a glorious day, don't you think? As far as Jenny was concerned, small talk was like a second pair of underpants. Uncomfortable and completely unnecessary. But Mom always says, create a good rapport and they'll reveal everything to you. So she gave it a shot. Talk about fishing, since he's fishing. How's the fishing? Oh, the fishing's great. But the catching is bad. All I'm getting are old boots and strange bits of metal. Just look out there, Jenny. She's got that wonderful afternoon glow. No one knew why the lake glowed at night. Probably radiation. And few were brave enough to swim its murky waters. What lay beneath its depths was the stuff of myth and legend. Ah, yes. Somewhere out there lies the giant red herring, or so they say. The Loch Ness Monster. No, no, that's not the Loch Ness Monster. It's the Incredible Hulk. But no one's ever caught one. Sounds fishy to me. Well, if she's out there, I'll catch her. Someday. Great. Well, now that we have a good rapport, where can I find Mrs. Humdrum? <laughs> well, she's down there on the ridge. Oh, so we need to use the ladder. Only one problem. I think the ladder is broken. Ah, yes. There's a knack to it. First you shake it. Then kick it. Then you kick it. And then you push it. Okay, so there's an order to it. Sounds unnecessarily complicated. I'll join you down there in a bit. Just have to sort my tackle out. <clears throat> Shake, kick, push. We got it. Let's go. All right, shake. And then we kick. And then we push it. Mm -hmm. Pa 
password accepted. Uh -huh. that did the trick. Yo, man, this rusty ladder got a password system? Mrs. Humdrum, I presume? Oh, hello! Yeah, you? I'm the private detective you contacted. And show credentials. Jenny LeClue, at your service. I'm here to solve your case. Who is it, Dan? It's Jenny, dear, the LeClue girl. She doesn't see so well without her glasses. Oh, hello, Jenny. I'm afraid I don't see so well without my glasses. <laughs> nothing wrong with her hearing, though. What did she say? I said there's nothing wrong with your hearing, dear. Oh, no, thank you. I've already eaten. What the heck? What the... What? I believe you have a case for me? We do. We, we do. Great. So what's the trouble? Haunted by the ghost of a former lover? Worried you're being poisoned by a mad uncle? Something so dark and gruesome I can't even begin to imagine the horror? Well? I lost my glasses. Can you find it for me? I've lost my reading glasses. Fuck! How do I know? <laughs> I called it. Oh. And there it was. A real case. A confounding mystery to challenge Jenny's brilliant mind. <sighs> I thought this was finally going to be a good one. That's a clip worthy clip right there. <laughs> what do you think, Jenny? Can you help? <laughs> sure, Mr. Humdrum. I'm gonna need to ask you a few questions. All right, let's find her missing glasses, but let's interrogate her first. Hair. All right. Expensive hairdo. <laughs> Over six inches tall. Looks freshly blow dried. A professional job. Your hair looks lovely today, Mrs. Humdrum. Is that a new style? Thank you. I had it done yesterday. Dan didn't notice. They call it the Queen's Quaff. Well, it's certainly big. And expensive. But I'm worth it, Dan. Who could put a price on that beautiful head of hair? You're not so bad yourself, hot stuff. Gross. I've never been interrogated before. This is such fun. All right, so she had at the hair salon yesterday. Chance she might have left it there? Possibly. I expect you're finding it difficult to paint without your glasses. Oh no, I never wear them when I paint. I like to feel the canvas, to interpret the colors. She's an incredible painter. You should have her paint you. Thanks, but I don't mix business with pleasure. You really are very good. The best. How long have you been solving mysteries? But I'll ask the questions, thank you. All right, binoculars. 30 times magnification? Do you often carry a pair of binoculars? She doesn't go anywhere without them. I presume you don't wear your glasses when you use the binoculars. No, I can't get my eyes close enough to the eye cups. Hmm, I see. What's next? Fingerprints? Oh, polygraph test? It's like you're reading my mind. Hmm. Oh, I see something here. Sticker! Oh, wait, I see it. Here. Ooh. Risk taker? Bad odds? Jenny had often snuck through the hole in the fence at Grubman's to watch the races. She could understand why the dogs ran so hard. They were chasing the promise of food. What the adults were chasing was less relatable. I notice you're a gambler, Mrs. Humdrum. You've been at the Greyhound races. That was yesterday. Hmm. So either the hair salon or the races. Most likely the races if she didn't need to take off her glasses to use the binoculars to watch the dogs run. We always go to Grubman's on Wednesday. Did you take your binoculars with you? Of course. Mm. Those little critters are so far away. I can't keep up without my binoculars. Mm -hmm. So she takes off her glasses to watch the hounds. Interesting. Have you figured it out yet? The suspense is killing me. 
<clears throat> Let me grab my dagger. <laughs> Alright, we're missing two more clues. And art gallery. Hmm. Oh, there's more. Hmm. Let's see her feet. Oh, there's something here. Nothing unusual with her legs, though. Nothing unusual. Oh. Oh, wait. Ooh. Got a scratch there. That's a large hole. She must have caught it on something. Did you have trouble climbing down the ladder, Mrs. Humdrum? Why, yes, I did. How on earth did you know? There's a tear in your pants pocket. Well, what do you know? I didn't realize these pants even had pockets. I feel like you know more about me than I do. <laughs> right? So one more clue is missing. So. Hmm. 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 You guys are welcome to point things out. I might be missing something. Obviously I am, because there's one clue left. Hmm. No extra on the... the hole. Nothing on her shirt, nothing with the buttons, nothing her neck. The canvas? I already looked there. There's no prompt or anything. Find hidden clues. The necktie? I'm pretty sure we checked that already. How about the other side here? No? Nothing here. The paintbrush? Mm. No? What could the last part be? She hasn't stepped on anything. Man, she got tiny feet though. Look at them! Holy shit! They're small. I think her arm. I don't see anything. Some paint here. Strong smell of turpentine. Okay. Ear. They're not showing. I don't think there's any clue on the canvas itself. Damn, what could the last one be? Pretty sure we checked everything. I call it red. What else could be hidden? Her buttons? Nope, no, nothing unusual with her buttons. Bad odds? Eyes? Oh, it is her eyes. Missing or stolen? Recent? Jenny recognized the distinctive indentations left behind by a pair of spectacles. She must have been wearing them recently. 
You still have marks from your glasses on the bridge of your nose. You probably lost them within the last day or two. Oh, I never would have thought of that. I just thought there was like no bridge shadow or something. When do you last remember wearing them? I'm really not sure. Dave? You had them at your Tuesday book club. Oh, yes. We're reading Fifty Shady Graves. <laughs> you are so thorough. Any more questions? I think I have everything I need to wrap this one up. Where are Gail's glasses? Well, there are two things that could be. Either at the hair salon or the binoculars when she was... She removes her glasses when she uses the binoculars. This is one thing. Hmm. She mo okay, she had their haircut Tuesday morning and then the bedding Tuesday night. So she most likely had her glasses until the bedding thing happened. So let's take these two. She didn't know she had pockets, so that's not it. These three. Gail was at the races last night. She had to remove her glasses to use the binoculars. Yeah. Gail also had her hair cut recently. It's fluffy and big and could easily hide a small object. Wait, it's in her hair? Solving a complex mystery like the case of the missing glasses was tough work. But now came the most satisfying part. Delivering the dramatic denouement. Detective? Okay, detective. Let's review the facts. One, not only do you love your binoculars, you've come to depend on them for bird watching, greyhound watching, basically anything far away watching. That's true. I immediately sensed the two optical devices, your binoculars and glasses, were incompatible. Thus, to use one, you had to remove the other. Oh, I could choose to have her? Explain it or the writer. I think. Fascinating. Fact two. Yesterday, you changed your hairstyle. I did. Though fun, it was also impractical. And so tall that it could easily conceal a small object. I see where this is going. Please, don't interrupt. After much research, deliberation, and debate, I've concluded there is only one place the missing glasses could be. <laughs> Up his ass! They've been on your head the whole time. Ah, the classic. Oh, so they are. Right there <laughs> on top of my head. <laughs> I like to just like, peek a -boo, here I am. <laughs> Incredible. What a talent. They're always in the last place you look, aren't they? Yes. I actually have that happen to my parents. <laughs> That they couldn't find their glasses and it's on their hair. I have an actual experience of this. Of my parents not finding their glasses and, and it's on their head. What would we have done without you? <clears throat> Gail, don't forget to pay the girl. Oh, of course, silly me. You must be rewarded generously for all your hard work. I'll make a painting of you. Oh, uh, insert fart noise there. <laughs> now don't spend it all in one place. How much was that? Thanks. I'll do my best. A quarter? How much did I get? You're not gonna tell me, huh? They were on her head the whole time. Easy. Alright, let's decorate it. Good. Whoa, okay. Didn't know that would happen. Or I didn't expect that could happen. Anyway. We solved the mystery. Better get my fucking sugary sweet coffee thing. Well, let's check the pier again. Now that the, the man is gone. Okay, nothing unusual. Maybe here? No. Or we found that one. Are you ready, Keith? Wow, 
What an amazing detective. Glasses on her head. Hmm, who could have guessed? Oh, you heard. Whatever would we do without Master Investigator Jenny LeClue? I thought it was pretty cool, Jenny. And a whole nickel! You must be so excited. How much is a nickel? Like 10 cents? Yeah, that's more than her mom makes in a month. Oh, was it 25? A quarter? Is it five? Oh shit. Five cents? Damn, son. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's all just... At least Susie's trying to be nice. Hey, Jenny, my grandma called. She wants her sweater back. No, uh It's my grandma's who <laughs> made this sweater, not yours. With friends. I've had enough of this. Oh, we gotta fire back, are we? Creased new shoes. Always wearing glasses. Brushed over face. Oh, she got a what you call it, a big forehead kind of thing. Be mean. Uh, let's be like regular mean. You know, fuck it. Be really mean. Skirt iron, but unevenly. Hey, granola bar. Welcome to stream. We're playing Jenny Lee Clue. The work of a distracted housewife. Brand new, hideously overpriced shoes. Overcompensating father. Your dad's sleeping with Deborah's mom again, isn't he? <gasps> what? No. How do you? Shut up, Jenny. You don't know anything. Wow, Jenny. That was cruel. Oh, not so fun when cru cruelty happens to you, huh? Who even says something like that? Aw, oh, don't cry, Veronica. She's just a weirdo nobody! Jenny, let who? And, and the case of the missing friends! <laughs> Dude, come on. You guys started this. If you can't handle it, don't throw it. Uh, yeah. Good one, Veronica. Come on. Let's get you home. Oh, damn. Are you coming, Susie? What what a revelation. <laughs> Thanks for the coffee, Kate. And the extra sugar. At least Susie's nice. Of course. It's... Nothing special at all and the same thing he does for everyone. Oh, okay. See you around, Keith. Well, that went well. Shall we? Uh, yeah. I've got no customers now anyway. Maybe I shouldn't be so mean. But hey, they started it, and I did like, fuck it. They pushed her over the limit. Nothing exciting ever happens here. I'm so tired of these simple cases. Why should we feel bad for them? They're fucking, they're fucking mocking Keith, mocking her, doing her what she, what she likes even. And they treat her like shit! Uh, frustration. How am I supposed to become a real detective if there are no real crimes to solve? You up that old lady? <clears throat> Darn. Thanks, Keith. But it was stupid. And everyone knew it. Including your girlfriend. She's not my- Hmm. And you really mustn't let them treat you like that. You should stick up for yourself. Uh-huh. They don't mean anything. Sometimes you just gotta speak up and say how you feel. Well, I... You can't just let people walk all over you, Keith. Okay. Careless judgment. I mean, careful. Care <laughs> careful. <laughs> it doesn't matter anyway. Nothing's gonna change. Not in this ghost town. It's not so bad. Don't you ever wonder what it would be like to live somewhere else? Oh, um, not really. Who am I kidding? There is nowhere else. Not for miles. They live in nowhere? Forlorn hope. <clears throat> hey! <clears throat> hey. Oh, shucks. I see practice is going well. Is your dad still pressuring you to play? Well... Come on, Keith. You hate basketball. Bruh. And tough love? But you're the worst player on the team. Not the worst. Well, on the bench, anyway. Why don't you just tell him you don't want to play anymore? 
It's a strawberry tradition. That's my point, Keith. This whole town is dead, stuck in the past. Everyone is just doing what they're told without questioning why. Where's the ambition, the sense of adventure? Are we still talking about basketball? Trick shot. <laughs> How's your mom? <clears throat> she seems distracted. Normally, she's so focused on her job. I mean, it's understandable. It's been almost a year since. And now she's planning to go away for the weekend. And she still won't tell me why. Yeah? She was definitely acting weird earlier. Maybe she's lonely? Uh-oh. And she's meeting up with his dad. You know what? You're right. I am? She shouldn't be alone right now. Actually, your dad told me they were meeting in the library. <laughs> oh, no. You know what happens in the library, guys. We're going to need supplies. Two of Mr. Bean's finest, please. To go, of course. Here is my payment in full. Oh, no. They're gonna be caught in the act. While CJ's in the corner hiding somewhere, taping it all for some conspiracy. That's a nickel. Put the rest on my tab? Thanks for the pep talk, Keith. You always know what to say to make me feel better. Last stone. You want it? Hmm, let Keith throw it. You take it. You need to practice. Here goes nothing. <sighs> Ooh, nice shot. Three pointer. Nice one, Keith. Maybe your luck's finally changing. Did it straighten out the the sign even? Oh, he activated the Loch Ness Monster. Keith was an excellent listener. Or maybe he just didn't speak much. Either way, Jenny really enjoyed their little talks. He was the only person who really seemed to understand her. Jenny biked briskly towards the library back on campus to surprise her mother. Nothing exciting ever happens here, she grumbled, unaware of the great adventure that lay in store just around the corner. Ooh, very exciting. Uh, hang on, you guys. Just gonna check out my recording file, how that's going. All right, it doesn't know yet. Wow, it didn't take many gigabytes. Anyway, we're continuing on, boys. I really like the game so far. Too quiet. Is someone sexing up in here? Wait a minute. What did it say? The library was quiet, as it should be. Maybe too quiet. Yo, man, they're sexing on mute? Gerald Strasbury. Cornelius Strasbury. It's a wall of Strasburys. The Strasbury lineage stretched back to the very founding of the university. They just copy-pasted with different background color. There had been a Dean Strasbury at Gumboldt for over 150 years. Damn. They ruled this town for 150 years. There won't be for much longer. The dean's retiring, and the only Strasbury left is Keith. And he's not exactly the academic type. Yo, what's with this crystal thing up here? Dude, are we... Are we in Final Fantasy fourteen like, housing? Dude, that's like the, the Shiva... The, what was it called? Shiva? The Shiva... Uh, chandelier? He looks like that. No one on duty. A book thief's paradise. There's a note on the desk. Oh yeah, it fucking is. It's spiky as shit, man. Is that thing falls down? You better not be under it. All right, here's see here. CJ memo. This man is not allowed in the library due to past incidents. He may be wearing a hat and or fake mustache. Be vigilant, and I see a sticker. Ooh, lion. 
Two, someone keeps leaving book cards in the quiet study area. Please remember to return cards to the front desk area and stop standing on them. We've got ladders for a reason. Dean Strasberry. All right. Nothing unusual. Can't flip it. Oh, get up. Get away. Don't stand under that. Jenny. That was weird. Hello? Mom? Mr. Strasbury? <laughs> you like here in the background? <laughs> Jenny's words <clears throat> echoed through the library. I knew she's hearing something else echoing in the library. A mystery was unfolding. Whatever it is, I'll get to the bottom of it. The quiet library. Too quiet. Alright, journal updated. Seriously, where is everyone? Hmm, yeah, that's a good question. Let's add a line to this. <laughs> ah! Her mother sounded very excited about something. Oh, there's something hidden. Oh, oh yeah, there's a power cord here. Les Strasbury, Gumbold's 21st and jolliest dean, smiled down at Jenny. Looking a bit wonky today, Mr. Strasbury. A pair of wires ran down the wall and disappeared behind the painting. It's too high to reach. What are you hiding back there? Gotta find that ladder. Oh, There's a garbage here. The chandeliers that adorn this library are made from rare Arthurtonian quartz. The fuck is that? Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. The Glatz family was one <clears throat> of the oldest in town. They were the first to mine the valuable quartz deposits beneath Arthurton. And as such, they became incomparably wealthy. And they sure like to let everyone know it. Huh, what's uh, what's with this garbage can here? Oh, lots of lots of tissues here. Ooh, it's, it's, it's kind of smelly and sticky. It smells it's a lot of squiddy. It smells like squid. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't heard that? Yeah, squid or fish. Jelly knows what's up. <laughs> Laddertron 5000. The pinnacle of remote ladder and bookcase technology. Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Hmm. Yo, let's step on it. Let's not step on that. Whoa, dangerous. The newly installed ladder system was prone to malfunction. Should have kept the old wooden ladders. They never tried to electrocute me. I need to find a way to turn the power off. Well, not going that way. All right, turn off the power. Mm, use control panel. Yeah, let's go. Jenny gazed at the technological marvel of Laddertron 5000. Seems pointless. It's not hard to move a ladder. Sometimes it feels like some unknown force is just trying to slow me down. Oh, you think you think some unknown force called gameplay? <clears throat> uh, let's see. What does what? No good. I don't think I'll be able to move the ladders while the electricity is on. Well, what the? I somehow solved that in first try. Jenny was notorious for climbing book cards. It's the only way to reach the highest shelves. In fact, this could be useful. But something else had caught her eye. Honestly, I was just pressing randomly. <laughs> mess. Who would leave it like this? Conspiracies 3, Messy Diagrams, Genealogy Books. Oh, CJ's been here. Eligible scribbles, 
intricate diagrams of giant machines, a worn copy of Aliens in Arthurton. Yep, CJ. Jenny knew only one person could have been sitting here. CJ. It's odd, though. He usually hides everything when he's finished. Huh. He got abducted midway. What's this? Oh. There's one more thing. <clears throat> a tattered hmm. piece of paper with a series of seemingly unrelated notes. Hmm. And a sticker. All right. CJ, what have you scribbled here? One, the Shadow Men. Or Shadow, the men in the shadows. Abandoned mines. Observe massive seismic activity. Possible landing site? At 2300. At forest. UFO swarm circling. Intense sound. Graveyard at 310. Take it. Powerful beams of light experimenting on corpses. SJ? Oh, he misspelled his name and he scribbled it out. Can I flip it? All right. Um, oh, I need to find clues. Oops. UFO swarm. Shadow men. Abandoned mine. And there. UFOs. Shadow men. Experiments on corpses. It seemed that CJ was unraveling a mystery of his own. Wait. There's something on the other side. Wow, a color map of Arthurton. Oh, cool. Jenny had never seen a town map with this level of detail before. It is kind of small. What a small town. I can't believe CJ left this behind. That's so unlike him. He'd be terrified if anyone else found it. I'll keep it safe until I see him again. There is really nothing near. There's an X here. Hmm. Why is the sticker here? <laughs> I didn't put the lion sticker there. Is the game glitching out again? Alright, the lion stays there. No, lion stays there. I'm not touching it. Alright, let's push this one to the painting so we can reach up there. This is probably like the, um, what do you call it in English? The, the power circuits or whatever. Alright, let's go. No secrets between friends, Mr. Strasbury. Jenny stood on her tiptoes and delicately removed the priceless painting from the wall. Yeah, delicately. Hmm, very good. Precisely what I was hoping to find. It was? Let's see. Lights. <laughs> Even the writer was like, what? <laughs> you wrote it. Ladders. I'll cut the power and continue my investigation. But Jenny knew better than to play with electricity. So she left it alone. Mm, turn off breaker. It's a simple switch. Perfectly safe. The eerie silence unnerved our tiny hero. Dude, we need some excitement. Come on, Ryder. But even worse was the dark. Jenny had always been terrified of the dark. Bruh, why didn't you tell me she was afraid of the dark? Just breathe. A great detective never succumbs to fear. <sighs> Looks like that did the trick. Now we can use the ladder. Oops. Yeah, now we can get up there. Jenny stopped in her tracks. The sign clearly read, wet floor, caution. I can read. Her path was blocked. You're kidding me, right? Trampling muddy feet over a perfectly clean floor? She was a maverick, not a monster. 
Fine. Let's see. Can we get up here? There. There's the hole. I see it. And then we climb up. Ooh, a door. Hmm. All right, let's check the door first. There's a clue somewhere. There's something on that shelf, but I can't reach it. Damn it! Rare books. Our most precious collections reside in this temperature-controlled room. Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Yeah, yeah, we know. Alright, we need something to reach that thing. The fallen remains of a bookcase blocked Jenny's path. It looks like a bomb went off in here. It's too precarious to climb over. Well, damn. I need that ladder there, though. How do I get there? Wait, how do I get there? Something about... Oh! There's more? Oh! Oh. Of course. This one looks awfully mysterious. I can't reach the other side, so... Hmm. If I... No? Okay. We probably need to turn on the power and make the ladder, like, go over here. Since you can't control them with the power on. Can I use it? Nope. Alright, let's go back and turn it on. Try door to books, but it did. I must be stupid or something. There's something that we're missing. It's locked. Well, duh. No problem. I'll just pick it. No, duh, really? Jenny was <clears throat> skilled with a lockpick, having watched her mother demonstrate the process countless times. Oh, we just had to open the door. But that was just for fun at home. This was the real world. You couldn't just go around picking other people's locks. But well, we did check the door. She she read the sign. A great detective knows when to bend the rules. And the paperclip she has in her pocket. God damn it. All right. <clears throat> Mom always says lock picking is a subtle art. Hmm. Move slowly and search for the sweet spot. Welcome to the lock picking lawyer and now we're going to lock pick this door. Find the sweet spot. How, do I, how does one know we found... Ooh. Ooh, slowly. Okay, there's something here. Whoa, lock picking was that easy? Alright, I find a sweet spot. Oh. Oh, you see how fast we do it? Oh. Oh, no, no, no. There. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The door is obviously locked using the model master locks and new 3500R model lock. Rookie mistake. All we need to do is just jam in with my new lock picking lick. Lock picking lick? What? I mean, lock picking th uh, thingy that's on sale on my website. so <laughs> irrationally. <laughs> Regardless, she had picked the lock and felt strangely exhilarated. Yeah, we licked the lock, making it wet. <laughs> what treasures lay behind the door? Because you all know, lock picking. It's easier when there's moisture nearby. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> oh, oh, wow. It's empty. Still, hmm? that book cart could be useful. Ow. 
All right, we can use this. Now we can reach that. Oh, okay. Guess we can use this to climb over. There we go. Whee! What the? What? Something's blocking the ladder. Something's here. Like the prompt shows. But where? Uh, oh, there. Pick up shiny object. There's something stuck in the track. Ipsa, Scientia, Potesta. Bro, Potest. it's the Strawberry's ring. It's the Dean's ring. That. No wonder the ladders were malfunctioning. What the, the fuck? Must have caused a short circuit. What the fuck? Dean? If only the clean made like a small PNG of a bulldozer drive. But what? <laughs> Bro, he was here. I'll keep hold of this and return it to the Dean when I see him next. Yo, man, he caused it. He caused the wreckage here. Whoa! An empty library, a fallen bookcase, and now a broken balcony. I didn't move. This mystery has all the hallmarks of foul play. Hmm, strong impact. They say words can't hurt you. In this case, I'd be inclined to disagree. Hmm. Solid iron and oak, torn apart like a piece of bread. It would have taken some serious force to do this. Something bad happened here. This is feeling more and more like a crime scene. Uh, how about you look down? It's the Dean, isn't it? Oh. Covered in a ripped curtain and surrounded by broken glass. It is a crime scene. Don't be happy about that. It's obviously Dean. And your mother's probably being accused by it. And the only one who might know what happened is CJ. But he's crazy. No one's gonna believe him. <clears throat> hmm. Ooh, more of that. Or it's gonna be like, it's the mom's dead body, and you're blaming the Dean. Or the Dean is getting the blame. Alright, that's not what I wanted, but hey. No. There. Alright, let's see whose body is under this. It's either Dean or you Jenny's mom. Forget the first time you see a dead body. It harrows the mind, terrifies the soul, scars you to your very core. <laughs> Judging by the bulge, it must be the Dean. <laughs> a dead body? No way. This is amazing. Who lay under that curtain? Who had breathed <clears throat> their last breath? Who had shuffled off this mortal coil to meet their maker? <laughs> and you just see like the Dean and uh, Jenny's mom just like... After... After pounding, like just like... Cuddling under the blanket, you know? <laughs> it could be anyone. I mean, it could be an escaped lunatic from the asylum. Or an axe-wielding maniac on the run from the cops. For a master detective, you can like piece it together with the ring you found. It could be... Dean. It could be 
Mom? Uh oh. Oh no. Please, no. No. You never forget the first time you see a dead body. The body's too big to be a woman. <laughs> or at least the, the body type. <laughs> Mr. Dean. Jenny knew it was wrong to disturb the crime scene. But I have to know who's under here. Slowly, she drew back the heavy cloth. Please don't be my mom. Please don't be my mom. I mean, last time we checked, her mom wasn't fat. Maybe thick, but not fat. Ah! <laughs> Why was that scary? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> What's going on? God. The game glitched out. I, I didn't like, but I didn't hold the button. I was pressing it. Holy fuck, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Poor Mr. Strausbury. What happened to you? Was this a terrible accident or worse? Murder. Her stomach churned. Seeing the Dean's lifeless face, his contorted frame, Jenny felt the urge to run to get as far away from this horrific sight as possible. I just... Jenny had longed for an adventure, for a real case to solve. I... didn't expect it to be like this. She gathered herself, took a deep breath, and began to search for... Oh, clues. I should have seen the clues too. He's retiring. Of course it's the guy who dies. It's always about, I'm a... I would like a week day, f a week away from retiring, and then just dies. <laughs> All right, I see some gallery stuff around. <laughs> Jump scared by detective game. <laughs> I'm gonna look at that later. I'm getting some good material for my TikTok, actually. <laughs> or YouTube shorts. It's smashed, most likely from the fall. So this is the time of death. When he corrected his uh, pocket watch when we first met him uh, today. And if it broke on the fall, that would mean this is the time of death. The hand stopped at 3.57 p.m. That gives me a potential time of death. If Jenny had arrived... <laughs> yeah, smashed. I might have been able to save him. He smashed the wrong thing. <laughs> Um, boop, 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 boop. He's holding something. The Dean's hand was clapped shut around a small object. That's strange. Rigor mortis usually takes hours to set in. I'm sorry for what I'm about to do, Mr. Strausbury, but this could be a vital clue. Ooh. Oh, it broke his hand. Oh, no. Mom's ID card? But... That means she's the murderer. Julie Leclue had definitely been here. Dude, it's totally turning out what we first theorized. She could be the last person to have seen him alive. She could be the killer. Impossible. My mother's a forensic expert. Which means she's the only one who can clean herself from the clues. I mean, for being the suspect. She knows everything that could lead to her. Be like, yep, this could lead to me. This could lead me. Delete, 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 delete. She'd never leave such incriminating evidence behind. Exactly! <laughs> but even the smartest criminals made mistakes. Oh yeah, there she also said that. <laughs> Jenny couldn't deny this looked bad for her mom. If anyone else sees this, they'll jump to conclusions. They'll think my mom's a murderer. I knew it. Unless... A peculiar thought crossed Jenny's mind. Unless... There's nothing to find. No, don't do... Oh, hey, Kevin! Can't wait to hear about your Japan trip. What do you mean? We never went to Japan. <laughs> that never happened, Kevin. But yeah, glad to see you here. Hope you're doing great. Long time I haven't heard from you. Removing evidence from a crime scene was highly unethical. So was planting evidence to frame an innocent person. She had no proof of that. I have to do something. Leave the evidence. We can't be criminals. Her mom would kill me if she thought I tampered with evidence. Besides, she's innocent. The truth will come out. Wait, we didn't go? I don't know what you know or what we told. We're, we're only planning a trip, but we don't know when. And also, like, the pandemic thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's 
that also stopped us. But of course, that's over. Since, what was it? That last quarter of last year, wasn't it? Uh, okay. But anyway. Alright, we leave the evidence. We want to go. He looks like he's been dead for weeks. We want to go, but we have a cat to take care of first. The skin is pale and colorless. Hmm? Oh yeah, that too. And there's a strange mark on his neck. Hmm, what is this purple stuff? He got injected with something. His button is missing. No, it showed up again. The hawk and the weasel and other bedtime stories. Is the the button with the uh, the jam? It could be important. Then again, it could have just joined the dean for the ride. Hmm. Some green stuff on it. Oh, more gallery stuff. The complete history of coin. Chance. What are the odds this was an accident? Likely, but that thing, you know? The, the purple thing on his neck. The Dean's Planner <clears throat> lay open on today's date. Perhaps I can retrace his steps and create a timeline of events. Oh, heck yeah. All right, Wednesday, he was rewriting and practicing his speech. Thursday, meet Michael Quad statue installation. Feet cat, take a crash. Julie, library postponed, discuss changes. After the rewrite intro? Okay, so we're meeting up with Julie at 3.45. Which is like about 10 minutes before his fall, according to his pocket watch. And that's the plan for today. Lunch with Keith. Coronary Cafe moved Tuesday. Okay. Staffing new dean nominations. They'll have to do it without me. Saturday. Campus speech. Faculty dinner. Grobner Hall. Whispering Woods. Midnight retirement. Hooray. Oh, yeah. I was supposed to find clues. Meet JL. Could that be mom? Widow's drop. Tell the truth. Widow's drop? I've never heard of it. Oh, Tuesday. Looks like he completed all his chores for the day. I already knew the dean was meeting mom here. So where is she now? Looks like he cancelled his meetings on Friday and rearranged lunch with Keith. Oh, poor Keith. Jenny didn't know how she would break the news to him. But I should be the one to tell him. Gossip spreads like wildfire in Arthurton. He sure was working hard on that speech. I'm sad he won't get to deliver it. <clears throat> okay. So we're missing that jam button that was here. Wait, why is this one on... The right? Wasn't that on his left side? Or it's a book about his right the side. Future. I suppose it didn't belong to Mr. Strasbury then. Alright, what else could we... Importante. We're missing one more clue. His other hand, maybe? Oh, here we go. Bits of glass and metal debris oh yeah, his ring. He has burn marks on his hand. Burn marks? That's all the evidence I'm going to find here. She took one last look at the Dean's lifeless body. I'm sorry, Mr. Strasbury. I promise I'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> he dropped his ring and tried to reach for it? Oh yeah, he, he reached for it and somehow broke the rails. I don't know. <laughs> but how often did a case like this come along? Just call the police and just solve it while they're on their way. Never. There's more to this than meets the eye. All right, let's go. Case of a lifetime, baby. 
Some of this evidence must be connected. Oh, you had Snoop Dogg yesterday? Damn. Wait, what? He had him. He had Snoop Dogg yesterday. What do you mean? As a pickup. Oh, wait, he's allowed to say that? Well, he said so in chat. No. The, the <laughs> Yo, man, Snoop Dogg knows about me? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I think he uh, he showed up in Norway uh, for a concert. He he came over and he left. He didn't even have the concert. <laughs> He's like, he, he came... like, damn, this snow be cold, and no, then left again. He went to eat. He went to eat and forgot about his own concert. <laughs> Man, that food was delicious. Can't wait to go back home. <laughs> So she opened her journal to join the dots. Hey, uh, Kevin, if there is an opening for uh, a job position, you you know where to send it to. Scott can be a good driver. Oh, yeah, I had a panic attack last week. What do you mean? I didn't talk about that. No, but you know about it. Anyway. Oh, no, the, dri the word driver. I'm sorry. That was what triggered it. How does that even happen? Anyway, let's not talk work and just continue game. I actually, I'm actually trying to get my mind away from what happened because it's, it's, it's actually giving me panic okay, because, or stress. Because it is the people on the Discord know. People on Discord knows because I wrote in the venting chat. And you can say, what? Right, so, the broken balcony, burn marks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, I can say these three things. was thrown from the balcony when he reached down to pick up his ring. Oh, Kevin says he got to eat Snoop Dogg's food because he didn't eat. So him and his colleague got all his food. Damn. You got a lucky lunch then. So bang, burn marks, broken balcony. Which was stuck in the electrified ladder track. He grabbed the curtain, but it didn't slow him down. He landed on a bed of metal and glass debris. But it doesn't explain the purple stuff on his neck. What is unusual about the Dean's death? The, the face and neck and... Um, unusual... Okay. That's not right. Back to the drawing board. All right. So not the pocket watch. Uh. Dean has a strange mark on his neck. All the skin around his face is gray and gaunt. I've never seen anything like it before. He's holding my mom's ID card, which makes her the prime suspect. But why would she or anyone want to kill Dean Strasbury? Jenny suspected foul play, but what was the motive? Had she missed something? So if this could be someone framing her mom, that's a possibility, but we don't know why. We don't know the motive, the reason for Dean's death. What would everyone get out of killing the Dean? The watch! The Dean's watch stopped at 3.57 p.m. When I came into the library, the clock tower rang four times. Yeah, it could be electric burn based on his hand, but it still doesn't explain the weird purple markings on his neck. The library only has one exit. And sure, they did say that the, the ladders had some weird malfunctions from time to time. So it could be he got a, like electric shock when... But how did he drop his ring though? Was it loose on his hand? Was it... I don't think it was like loose on his finger. And I haven't seen anyone but the Dean since I got here. Which meant if the Dean was murdered... The killer must still be here. Oh, oh. <gasps> Out the window. It's getting away. It's probably CJ who would be like, I saw everything. Don't believe it. It was the aliens. 
I can't get up there. <laughs> oh, I can climb up. Never mind. I'll catch your thief. Jenny could hear police sirens in the distance. Someone did call the police. It wasn't Jenny. Someone must have tipped them off. I'll catch the murderer and keep him busy until the cops arrive. Chasing off the murderers was hardly the job of a little girl. Hey, you! Stop! No, they'll stop him. Oh no, we died. Game over, boys. Surviving her fall without so much as a broken bone. Ah, plot armor. Got it. Jenny couldn't help but feel she had failed. As the sirens grew louder, she knew it would only be a matter of time before the sheriff arrived. And then she'd have to explain why she hadn't called for help. But the worst feeling of all was that she had let the killer escape. The, the killer didn't stop when I yelled stop! Well, uh... As she drifted slowly into unconsciousness, Jenny heard a familiar voice. You're finally awake. <laughs> Concerned, gentle, soothing. Jenny? <gasps> it's the mother! Oh no. Oh Jenny, what have you done? Mom? Freeze! You're under arrest! Oh no, it begins. Uh, I got an achievement. It's an achievement that calls it begins. Whoa, did you murder your publisher? What's going on? I killed him. Oh no. Oh. This is all wrong. Murder in Arthurton? Bro, it's exciting, my man. This is not an appropriate story for Jenny LeClue. Dude, it sure raises excitement. Poor Dean Strousberry. What was I thinking? Excellent. I've gone too far. No. Perhaps I should take a break. Ah, that's a good. A break is always good. Come on, Rufus. Let's go for a walk. Clear our heads and work off some of this jam. Ducky! Ducky says no. You go that walk on yourself. For yourself. <clears throat> Alright, anything new I can look here? Ooh, drafts. Ooh, that's a lot of drafts here. Alright, um... Let's see his ideas here. Letter to Finkel fans. Draft. Well, it's me again, Arthur K. Finkelstein, and here we are at book 38 of the Jenny Lee Clue series. A most joyful adventure yet. Thank you all for the new Jenny Lee Clue fans, uh, Jenny Lee Clue fans out there. You have both been incredibly supportive. To answer your questions, one, despite any rumors you may have heard, of course the Jenny books will continue. As long as there is ink in my pen and ribbon in my typewriter. Yes, it will be more of the same. I refuse to change my formula. Atherton will always be a safe and happy place. Well, that's the thing. When strange things... Ah. Uh, I guess this is all the fans sorted by name. There's a bread DJ Archangel Strasner. Max, where you see Max? Oh, there, Angus Max Sexy. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a hot name right there. Max Sexy. Blue. Are these like developer names or backer names? Eduardo Saures, Dewey. Patrons. I don't think this was like a. 
Could be patrons. This game came out in 2017, if if I think I saw the, the right year on Steam. Max Zero. It could be, yeah, Kickstarter. Takayuki. Damn, no Scott. I'm sad. <laughs> uh, Alright, here we go. Oh, the last thing he wrote. What was this? No! Oh no, I ruined the ending! Am I rewriting the ending? Oh no, okay. Like, right before the, the end uh, of the chapter? You can rewrite it? Oh, I can? Murder. Oh no. Ah! That was just a headline news. Oh no, I'm getting interrogated. Truth. I told you I was looking for mom. Why? We were going to grade papers. When do I get to see her? Did you disturb the crime scene? No, I didn't. I let the evidence stay. He could have been injured. I was just trying to help. I want to speak to my mom. Not gonna lie to but oh god, she's okay, she's having a nightmare. Why would you think she's lying? I'm telling the truth! Oh, I can I can move. Under the table, I'm safe here. Let's gonna escape here. Bye! <laughs> Run! She's behind bars! Did she go to heaven? Oh no, it's Keith. Keith! Please, look at me. Keith, wait! Wait! An affair gone wrong! <laughs> they were lovers! You can see it in her eyes. Murderer, pure evil. People were suspecting an affair. Double, triple casket? I can hold on to this? Oh, this is supposed to be my mom, right? I'll, I'll grab my mom. Oh god, why did I do that? Alright. Well, now they're connected. Um... Oh, here's more. Oh, it's the dad?
trying to connect happy family. Oh no, we're all three dead? Hey Granola Bar, thanks for the follow. Enjoy your stay. We gotta run from the centipede picture! Ah! was dead. My mom was in jail. Keith told me he never wanted to see me again. And worst of all, I was surrounded by an evil army of giant teddy bears. What? That didn't happen in your nightmare. Unfortunately, it was all true, including the teddy bears. My eyes! There's something wrong with them! Everything's pink! But her eyes were fine. It was the room that was pink. Is this Susie's room? Pink cuddly toys. Pink furniture. Pink clothes. I think this is Susie's room. And a hand-drawn homage to teenage heartthrob Pelvis Cressley. Pelvis Cressley? Covered in pink hearts. Everything a teenage girl could dream of. But she well, likes to go by Susie. Wasn't that what she said? Marshmallow exploded. It was at this point Jenny remembered where she was. I shouldn't be here. What happened? And what is that terrible music? I can't think straight with that. <laughs> I hate her for now, so Susan. <clears throat> hey, she was the nicest of the three girls that was like making fun of Keith. These aren't my clothes. And where's my journal? That wasn't the only thing missing. The Dean's ring! It was in my pocket. Oh yeah, her hair clip is also missing. Good eye. Yeah, I'm not leaving. Because she is like one of those three bully, too rich for you peasant. Oh yeah. Yeah, as you can see the, the crystal lights, crystal chandelier things. Stop terrible music. You're the f What? You're the fan that I love. Okay, by Pelvis Cressley. And the Hip Thrusters. <laughs> what a band name. Hip Thrusters. Oh, I didn't have. I was turning my head. Man that I love. Ah, yes, the mm. eagerly awaited follow-up to the smash hit. Even though I'm a big star and you're just a fan, perhaps someday we could be together. Ugh! Who buys this crap? I was turning my head and I'm like, oh yeah, I can just turn it like, actually in game. <laughs> huh? Hushed whispers in the hallway? I should investigate. Spin! I can't run for... It won't let me dash. Peek through a hole. It's locked from the outside. Who would trap a child in his nightmarish hellscape? Jenny peeped through the tiny keyhole. As her eyes adjusted to the light, she recognized the substantial frame of Winston the Clue. Winston the Clue? What? Wait, who? The substantial frame of Winston the Clue? What do you mean, Winston the Clue? Arthurton's long-standing sheriff and Jenny's uncle? Granddad. Oh, grandfather.
Jenny's relationship with her <coughs> grandfather was contentious, to say the least. But from which side? The mom's or the dad? Stickless for rules, distrust humor, weakness for tiny kittens. Oh, he loves cats. He was a stern and humorless man who placed honor, tradition, and the law above all else. Sometimes even family. But what was he doing here? I guess from the dad's side, if you like, if the mom took the last name. And who is he talking to? Influential socialite, generous Florence philanthropist. The were the wealthiest couple in town and hugely influential. Their company, Glatz Mining and Supply Corps, was the oldest in Arthurton. Suspiciously white teeth. While Richard may have been the head of the business, everyone knew that Florence wore the pants. Exceptionally charming and generous, she always had a smile on her face. Which is why I don't trust her one bit. Mm -hmm. Being careful not to make a sound, Jenny leaned in and listened. With everything going on, I don't have time to watch her. It's no trouble at all, really, Winston. She can stay for as long as she likes. The girls are great friends. I only hope she feels better soon. That was quite the scene she made at the funeral. She should have left the boy alone. Really, Winston? This whole situation must be unbearably traumatic for the poor girl. Her mother in jail, and what she saw in the library. One shudders at the thought. And all this barely a year after what happened to Henry. She'll be fine. Just keep an eye on her. She can be a real handful. Oh, don't worry. I've planned everything. Pony rides, afternoon tea, and tomorrow we're going dress shopping. Oh, that's... Hmm. Um... Oh, that reminds me. I have something for you. A big black di Dress shopping? First they lock me up, now they want to torture me? I need to get out of here. Fast. But her curiosity was piqued. She had to know what Mrs. Glatz had gone to fetch. And so she waited. Alright, so that's the granddad. Nathaniel Glatz stared disapprovingly back at Jenny. Creepy old man. Actually, this was the man who saved Arthurton. When the quartz mines began to run dry, it was his research into the unique properties of the crystals that secured the future prosperity of the town and the company. Mm. When Thaladius T. Pumberbitten discovered the first quartz seam lining the Great Mountains, little did he know the impact it would have on the future of the town. Little did he know the Glatz family would muscle in and take over the whole operation. Nowadays, it was hard to go anywhere in town without seeing something made from it. Huh? Oh. Where did he go? Granddad disappeared. Peekaboo. I knew it. Winston, what are you doing down there? Hmm, thought I heard something. Really? A man of your age spying on teenage girls? I've told you already, she won't be going anywhere. It was probably just Jenny's imagination, but those words felt oddly... Sinister. Damn. Alright, we're missing one more clue. Here. Oh, wait, never mind. Why does Mrs. Glatz have official police documents? You're right! Satisfied. How is Julie? She's in the safest place, behind bars. Surely they don't believe she's guilty. I don't envy you, Winston. It must be hard to stay impartial. Hmm. If the poor dear would just confess, it would make things much easier. I have everything under control. Of course you do, dear. No one doubts your loyalty to Arthurton. Wait, she believes she did it? She's probably the mastermind behind it all. We must continue to look out for each other. Now more than ever. Sheriff, are you receiving? Go ahead. It's the Le Clue house, sir. We found something. Oh, no. She probably planted all the evidence in her house. I'll be right there. Over. It sounds like you've got important things to take care of. Yes. Well, good night, Florence. Good night, Winston. Don't let her out of your sight. She is a clue after all. I'm sure we'll manage. Jenny couldn't believe what she'd just heard. Everyone thinks my mom's a murderer. Thankfully, her mother's fate was in safe hands. The fine people of the Arthurton Police Department. 
Oh, God. She's gonna rot in jail. Jenny could leave the case to them and enjoy a fun week of pony rides and shopping sprees. Ryder, come on. No. No? Mom always says a great detective leaves nothing to chance. I have to do something. But she was just a kid. What could she possibly do? This is my chance. The case of a lifetime. My mom needs me, and I won't let her down. I'm gonna find my stuff and get out of here. And just like that, a great adventure began. I'll grab my stuff! Oh, that's creepy as shit. Des destroyed. Destroyed. Oh no, destroy it. You scared the life out of me, pig. The sun was setting behind the great mountains of Arthurton, cradling the town in a warm red embrace. I slept the whole day away? I have to get out of here and make up for lost time. How many days has passed? All the dangly bits are swaying. Strange. It's not windy in here. Best in show, horse ballet. First prize, advanced table etiquette. There's one here for best smile. Seriously? There's a track in the ceiling panel around the chandelier. Ooh. It looks like it can move. A heart-shaped mirror for the lady who loves herself. Okay, let's turn on all the lights. Oh! Sticker. Oh, gallery art. Oh. Oh. Hmm. There's something strange about this mirror. This requires further investigation. That's more fun than it should be. I think I got all the dialogues from this. Okay. Um Ouch. That's hot. All right. I don't know. I, I probably need to do something with it, but I don't know yet. Seriously, who has windows this big? Below, Lake Nowhere stretched out as far as the eye could see. In the distance, Jenny could just make out the great lighthouse on Skull Island. It's foggy out there tonight. Havoc at Hero's Memorial. At Monday, Morning Edition. Oh, shit. Three, four days has passed at least? Friday, Sunday. Alright, okay. Havoc at the Hero's Memorial. What should have been a touching farewell to a beloved member of the community was tarnished by a poorly timed act of protest yesterday at Mother of Mercy Church. Like, how am I supposed to read? I guess this way. An emotionally unstable child was witnessed shouting at members of the congregation causing damage to property and even desecrating the corpse. After a long chase, the girl collapsed and was carried from the premises. That's not what happened, but okay. <clears throat> Hundreds gathered to pay their respects to the late Leslie Strasberry, a long-standing and beloved dean of the Gumbot University, who was murdered in cold blood by a member of her own, uh, his own faculty. The community was devastated last Thursday when Mr. Strasberry was found dead in the school library after apparently being pushed from a third-story balcony. The murder was the first in the, the town had seen in decades. Dean Strasberry is survived by his son, Keith Strawberry. After an anonymous tip, Sheriff Winston LeClue arrived first on the scene and found a woman covered in the Dean's blood. Evidence has linked her to the murder. Although a motive for the killing has not been established, the woman has been identified as Julie LeClue, professor at the criminology and daughter-in-law to Sheriff Winston LeClue. Okay, so the dad is the, the... So the grandfather is from the dad's side, it seems. 
She remains in the custody of this time while police continue their investigation. Oh, I have to look at clues on this one? Shit. Oh, mm, sticker. Uh, clues, clues, clues. Pushed from the balcony? That's not what happened. And no mention of electrocution. Oh yeah, we can uh, pinpoint out the mistakes here. I don't remember any of this. I bet that kid's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, like I said, that never happened. Mom wasn't covered in blood. No, she wasn't. That's a lie. Man, they really like to exaggerate in this. Jenny thought of her poor mother, locked away in a jail cell for a crime she didn't commit. Don't worry, Mom. I'll prove you didn't do it as soon as I get out of here. Either this is shoddy reporting, or someone is trying to cover up what really happened. My mom's still in jail, so the police must not think this was an accident. And if it wasn't an accident, then... The real killer is still out there! On the other side of the lake, beyond the Forgotten Forest, sat a more modest house. No fancy windows or crystal chandeliers, just a small wooden frame in need of painting. Home. Alright, search Waro. I've never seen so many clothes. Maybe mine are in here somewhere. Too pink, too flashy, too delicate, too flowery, too expensive. Well, my clothes definitely aren't here. They'd be easy to spot amongst all the sequins and ribbons. Wait! The lights! Got it. Oh, sticker. Now, let's see if I remember the lights, uh, the light order. All right, so the only one that needs to be on is this. There. Turn it on. Ooh. This family's disposable income is outrageous. I always knew they were hiding something. Damn, the, the fucking lady in the house should have heard this. I bet there are all kinds of horrific secrets lurking up there. All right. Well, while we're here. Oh, operate elevator. Unless they got really good soundproofing. Oh, it's just a dusty old attic. Dusty old and spooky. Oh, that is spooky. Yo, we didn't hear the machinery. Spooky bear. Feels like he's watching me. Everything in here is covered in dust, except this bear. And there's light <clears throat> coming from behind him. What are you hiding, spooky bear? Move evil looking bear. Let's wait with that. Dozens of old boxes covered in dust and cobwebs. Filled with toys, school projects, and old trophies. Attics, where dreams go to die. Oh, there's something here. Gallery art. All right, we checked everything. Let's move that evil looking bear. Game over. Smothered by a giant teddy bear. 
What an end that would have been. Just as I suspected, a hidden staircase. <gasps> There's a clue. Where could it? Oh, there it is. Gather we are. Timmy! She was no stranger to the labs at Gumbold, but she'd never seen anything quite like this. Was that Susie? Not inside someone's oh, I'm house. sorry, Susan. Hey, what are you doing up here? <laughs> uh, she lives here. Deploy the teddy bears. Susie? Susie Glatz. Heir to the Glatz fortune. Loved by all kinds to a fault. Jenny's cousin was also the most popular girl in town. Wait, they're related? Wait, I didn't know they were related. When was that pointed out? Did I miss that? What are you doing up here? I should ask you the same question. What is all this equipment? And why is there a secret elevator running from your room to the attic? Oh, you must need my collection of teddy bears. You keep She's trying to hide her laboratory with hanging teddy bears. Seriously. She's trying to make it like this leverage. What, really? Come on, girl, we've already seen everything. Be diplomatic. I see. My apologies, then. But tell me one thing, Susan. Why is that teddy bear wearing a welding helmet? Well, um, there's a simple explanation for that. There are just too many to fit in my bedroom. That doesn't explain anything. Susie, clearly something's weighing heavily on your mind. Take a deep breath and answer the question honestly. I promise you'll feel better. It's not what you think. It isn't? This is where I, um, er... <laughs> this is where I masturbate! I mean, uh... <laughs> Teddy bears! Yeah, you established that already. But... They all look alike, so... Enough! Stop avoiding the question! Gain her trust, why not? You don't need to hide anything. You can be honest with me. I can't. You wouldn't understand. Have you tried? She's a detective. She can understand. Try me. Susie's secret was the kind you took to the grave. A shameful, dark secret. She likes science. A secret so shocking she feared she would lose everything. Her friends would abandon her. Her family would disown her. She'd never find true love. Oh God, I'm going to die alone. Ugh. You can't tell anyone. You have to promise me. Fine, just stop whimpering like a lost puppy. You could cuss him. Embarrassing yourself. Ugh. Here goes nothing. This is my secret laboratory. <laughs> Whoa! This is Dexter's lab? Where I design and test my inventions. <laughs> Buy it. Your laboratory, where you invent things. Yes. You, a cheerleading, horse riding, dress wearing debutante. Yes. I want to believe you, Susie, but you know how crazy that sounds. That's why you can't tell anyone. If people found out, I'd lose everything. Could it be true? Susie Glatz, in fact, a secret nerd genius. Well, you can test her out. Ask her nerd questions. Is she really leading a double life? 
There's only one way to find out. Susan Quincy Glatz, I'm gonna have to ask you a few questions. Yeah, okay. Interrogation. What? Pink bows, fluffy bears, stylish clothes. She can't possibly be a scientist. She... She... She hit a welding torch in her hair and disguised it as a ribbon? <laughs> Do you really <laughs> expect me to believe that you aren't obsessed with boy bands in the color pink? Brain or bimbo? Which one is it? I am a scientist. But I also believe in the importance of good skin care and the power of matching accessories. You sound ridiculous. Susie couldn't be pretty, popular, and smart. I mean, why not? That was just greedy. Okay. Oh, she has this too. Basketball. A gumbled pin. The dean was wearing one the day he died. Could Susie have played a part in the dean's death? No. All of Jenny's instincts told her it wasn't possible, but she needed to know for sure. Tactful. Why not? You smell nice. What perfume is that? Oh, thanks. It's called Innocent. <laughs> it sounds like Innocent. Wow, I actually... never mind. I remember you were wearing it last Thursday at the lake. I was. What did you do that day? After you left? Peggy and I took Veronica home. She was really upset. She deserved it, that bitch. And you were there all afternoon? Yes. Why? How close is Veronica's house to the library? I don't understand. Why do you want to know all this? <laughs> oh, she's not a scientist anymore. She doesn't understand. Ooh, I thought you were a nerd. I need to rule you out as a suspect. Suspect? Why would I be a suspect? You're certainly very good at keeping secrets. I didn't do anything. Just ask Peggy or Veronica. I don't know why you're friends with them. They are terrible character witnesses. First Veronica, then Keith, and now me. I never thought I'd say this, but sometimes you can be a real... jerk. Damn, I was hoping for pain in the ass. <laughs> oh no. What were you saying about Keith? Yeah, what did you do to Keith? Well, you didn't exactly make things easier for him, did you? Did you rub it in his face or something? You don't remember. <laughs> nice one. Oh, well, I suppose it wasn't that bad. What do you mean? After you interrupted the Reverend Eulogy, and after Keith asked you to stop, you tripped and knocked over the Dean's casket. Oh. Oh, that explains the falling casket thing. And I guess they hadn't secured the lid properly. Oh. Oh. Because he rolled right out. Oh no. Gasps. Oh no. As you collapsed and fell into his open grave. And that's why everyone's so worried about you. Oh no. It all came flooding back. She had tried to defend her mom and repair her relationship with Keith. Instead, she had ruined everything. Jenny had lost her best friend. You should talk to Keith. I'm sure he'll forgive you. It's not that simple. He thinks my mom killed his dad. She felt the distance between them grow with every passing minute. How could she face him without answers? I have to find the Dean's real killer. Wait, is this, is it Halloween? I guess Halloween happened. We saw some Halloween decorations before we, we left school, right? Oh. Dangerous. Oh, it's the fucking ray gun we saw the the CJ held, held of the uh, cereal box thing. If this is really your lab, what does that thing do? 
Next term, he's a thermal imaging machine. All right. He uses reflective thermographic projections to infer depth-related topography and subsurface bodies. That sure sounds sciency. I believe her. Come again? Who lets you see inside stuff? Oh, cool! An X-ray machine. Hmm. Well, what about that thing? That's Judy Kate, a gamma ray induction polygraph. And that? Hydraulically propelled telemetric manipulator. A, a lever. And this? Oh, come on. Really? That's a tea set. What? I like to drink tea. How did you get all this stuff up here anyway? And without being seen? You'd be surprised how much you can hide in a giant stuffed teddy bear. I know what's going on here. You've stolen all this stuff. How? Bitch, she's... Her family's like the richest in town. Why would she steal? And you're planning to sell it all to buy more fluffy cushions or pink horses or something. Bitch. Jenny. You're a massive detective, but you're being really stupid right now. I didn't steal anything. <laughs> Some of the parts are from my father's factory. The rest I bought with my allowance. That's some allowance. If you didn't steal it, why are you worried about people finding out? I'm head cheerleader. I'm captain of the equestrian team. Whoa, when did we get into, like... L MLP? Anyway. If the other girls knew about this, they'd laugh me all the way to the back of the cafeteria. Why do you care what they think? It's not just them. If my parents found out about my lab, they'd kill me. Whoa. Why? Don't they want you to be a scientist? I think they'd like me to marry a scientist. Dad says science is a man's job. Whoa. Whoa. We got a little, uh... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Supposed to bake pies and become prom queen. Oh no, he's that type of guy. Ugh, everyone in Arthurton is stuck in the past. If anyone else showed him the things I've created, he'd call them a genius and make them his lead scientist. He should not post that his opinions on Twitter. <laughs> so tell him, prove him wrong. I, I just can't. You have to keep my secret. I'm begging you, Jenny. Poor Susan. <clears throat> All of her secrets laid bare. Jenny couldn't help but feel disgusted. Maybe there was more to Susie than she had first presumed. Okay, we're missing one more clue. What could be the last one? Her eyes? Hmm. 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 Oh! Seeing textbooks strewn about the floor reminded Jenny of something. My journal! I need to get my stuff back. Where are my clothes? Oh, Gerald took them. Who the hell is Gerald? Our butler. Of course you have a butler. He's taken them to be cleaned and pressed. They'll be ready in a few days. What? It doesn't take five days to clean clothes? What the fuck? Yo, man, but you're the richest family in town. It sure take forever to get stuff clean. <sighs> well, I need them now. I've got a dress that would be perfect for you. Oh, no. It's got purple bows, and the sequins will really bring out the color of your eyes. Be polite. Be polite to your no, cousin. Thank you. I'd rather be burned to death. That, that sounded more rude than polite, but okay. No one's going to take me seriously in a purple ball gown. And where's my other stuff? Don't tell me Gerald's got my journal. It's irreplaceable. Like I'd let that nosy old fool see your diary. It's not a diary. It's my case notes. Right, of course. A girl's gotta have a place to keep her secrets. I put all your stuff in the lockbox under my pillows. Are you kidding me? No wonder my head hurts. Jenny was confident that Susie wasn't involved in the Dean's murder. She wasn't evil. Just insufferable. All right, I'm gonna grab my stuff and get out of here. Oh, while you're wandering around, can you find some parts for me? I need a battery and a transistor to finish this device. What? No! I did something for you. It was true. Susie had kept Jenny's journal safe. And the Dean's ring. She'd even revealed her darkest secret to Jenny. Fine! Enough already! What's a transistor? Oh, it's an electronic voltage regulator that... No, don't go into details. Just tell me what it looks like. Just tell me what it looks like. 
Man, I know what they're saying. <laughs> That's a clip worthy right there. It's a tiny metal object with an antenna and three legs. If you can't find one in my bedroom, there are some old boxes in the attic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transistor and battery. Got it. Go, Jenny! I've got to get out of here. <laughs> She's me. <laughs> Uh, there should be something shiny here. Oh, there. Woo! Oh, there's more. New sticker! Can't use them because I don't have my journal. And I apparently can run because I don't have my clothes? Alright, let's find this transistor thingy. What is that liquid? Uh, probably something science-y. Pure to still science. We'll go with that. Bunch of old science fair projects. They had all been submitted by Anonymous, and they'd all won first prize. These awards should be hanging on the walls downstairs. Well, she's keeping her science tests a secret. It was sad to see all these marvelous accomplishments hidden away in the attic. Susie wanted so badly to please her parents. To live up to their expectations of what a Glatz girl should be. She never even told them she'd entered the science fairs. Oh, there's something shiny. Something shiny somewhere. There. Ooh. A tiny metal object with an antenna and three legs. Looks like a transistor to me. Now, where can I find a battery? Oh, we'll take it from that creepy pig looking thing. The fucking vibrated also. Let's go down and get it. Oh! There's a shiny somewhere here. Oh. Ooh, ducky! All right, mechanical pig. I'm sorry, Mr. Pig, but I need your batteries. I love you. I love you. Ah, oh, it's so creepy. This will only hurt for a second. Destroy it. Destroy it. Doesn't this thing usually have like a Doesn't those things usually have like a zip on the back you just open? That's kind of dangerous to have to for donating your body to science. That's Susie's stuff taken care of. But I still haven't found my own. She said it was under the pillow in her bed. That's kind of dangerous, my man. Anyway. <clears throat> Wait, what? Are you seeing that? The teddy bears are clipping through. You seeing it? Uh, of course. Let's see. Stars, lips, hearts, and beakers. What would a girl like Susie use as a password? You are my best FFFFRAT. Well, she likes science. So it's probably this. The science valve. Oh my god. Oh, I see.
Fuck! I thought I had it. So that's it. Okay, so I need to find someone to make these two align. If I do... Oh, I think I got it. I just do this. And this. Voila. Of course it was the beakers. Clever. My staff. Jenny hid the ring in her pocket Great. and flipped through. I grabbed my staff. No obvious signs of tampering. At least Susie knows how to mind her own business. I'll give her the battery and transistor, and then I'll find a way out of this place. Yay, I can look at my journal now. Uh huh. Hmm. All right. Um. I want. I want to decorate. So we got this one. Oh, hang on. Kenta's being somewhere he shouldn't be. Kenta! Oh, no. Back. <laughs> Kenta was climbing uh, got his table, which he shouldn't. Or he's not allowed to. Anyway. Gun. The joy of having pets. He goes pew! And the lion is like, oh, <laughs> there we go. He really wants to smell what's on Gladys' table. It's like that area, like the forbidden area he's not allowed on. He wants to know why he can't be there. <laughs> Alright, Susie, I got your stuff. Here you go. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Now, back to the task at hand. Making my escape. Don't you want to know what these parts are for? Only if it will help me get out of here. Ah! Careful! That's a stick of dynamite! Dynamite. Well, it's safe as long as you don't turn and like ignite it. Are you crazy? You could have blown me to bits. There's no fire anywhere. You're fine. I did say be careful. What are you making bombs for? They're not bombs. They're silent explosives. I'm pretty sure dynamite is not silent. Silent explosives? Think about it. Dynamite that doesn't make a sound. Impossible, you say? Not at all. My first breakthrough came when I discovered the unique properties of... Oh no. I can use this to blow my way out of here. Um, the explosion might be silent, but I think my mom would notice that part of the house was missing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, thanks for the show and tell, but it's time for me to go. And how exactly are you going to leave without being seen? I'm glad you asked, Susan. I'll be making my exit through the window in the attic. Once I found a way to unlock it... Oh, you're out of luck there. My parents are super security conscious. All the windows are locked electromagnetically. I see a giant magnet. Where are the controls? Downstairs, in Dad's study. And I can't get there without being seen. Is there some kind of override? It's impossible to open them from up here, unless there was a total power failure. Well then, I know exactly what to do. Okay, well, I'll be here if you need help. There's a giant magnet there. Use that? Can I... Can I use this? No? Fine. What does this machine do? That's Judy Kate. She's a portable lie detector. Oh. Portable? Not really. It's 18 feet tall and bolted to the floor. Yeah, well, I'm still working on that part. But she can detect a lie with 98% accuracy. That's quite a claim. Let's see. Good evening, small human child. I am Judy Kate, arbiter of truth, detector of lies, 
Since this is the first time we have met, I will need to calibrate. To begin, please answer this simple question. What is the meaning of life? Eight. What? How am I supposed to answer that? Ha. 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 <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, sorry. I've been experimenting with her personality chip. She's using humor to build a better rapport with subjects. Still needs some work. To begin, please tell me your name. My name is Jenny LeClue. Welcome, Jenny LeClue. That's not how calibrating the light. Ugh. I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. Oh, whatever. Well, let's tell a lie. Susie isn't secretly smart, and she didn't build you. What? I think I broke it. It's okay. Her fuse just tripped. She gets very sensitive if you lie to her, <laughs> especially if it's a big lie. What? What? What kind of, what kind of lie to take the breaks after one lie? But don't worry, she'll reset in a minute. Interesting. All right. What's happening here? Ring. It belonged to, um, uh, it belonged to a friend. I'm taking care of it for him. Well, that's half true. But that doesn't make any sense. I'm telling you the truth. No, I mean, why would a ring made of gold stick to a magnet? <gasps> it's fake. Gold isn't magnetic. Unless there's something more to it. Which of these machines did you say could see inside things? Oh, maybe there's some metal inside of it that is magnetic. Excuse me, Tim. We need your help. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Tim, the thermal imaging machine. Metal, plastic, wood. There's nothing I can't see inside. Except, of course, your innermost thoughts. Damn. Look, I don't need a best friend. I just need him to examine the ring. Ouch. That hurt my feelings. No, don't break down. Don't break down. Go easy on him. He's quite sensitive. Are all your machines sensitive? Ugh. Hi, Tim. Nice to meet you. Oh, how wonderful it is to meet you, my new friend. How can I be of service? I need you to look inside something for me. I'd be delighted to. Please place the object on my soft, velvety platform. Come to me, tiny object of vast mystery and import. <laughs> Reveal to me your deepest secrets. Whoa. Swim in my warm bath of gamma rays. You don't need to... Okay. Okay, now you're getting weird. What's that? Deeper still. Oh no. I've never seen one of those before. Fascinating. All the wonders I have seen. Well, spit it out already. One moment, please, while I paint you a picture of the journey we just shared. Okay, screws. I knew there was something special about this ring. It's full of tiny cogs and gears. Oh, there's a mechanism to the ring. I've never seen such intricate craftsmanship. I need to borrow your microscope. I guess that's what this magnetic. Tiny buttons hidden in plain sight. Clever. I wonder what they do. Oh, 
Oh. So I can see there's a press sequence. And there. The ring opened up like a flower. Why would the Dean have a ring like this? Whatever its true purpose. Aliens! This ring was important. Your man CJ might be up to something. Important enough to kill for? Dean Strausberry, what were you involved in? Aliens. Did you say Dean Strausberry? Whose ring is that really? Dean. Ugh, I got an achievement called Dean Coder Ring. Because the. the, the Coder Ring. Susie had entrusted her deepest, darkest secret to Jenny. The least Jenny could do was be honest with her. Tr yeah, trust her. It's the Dean's ring. Well, it was. You stole the Dean's ring? Technically, I found it. Jenny, you've got to turn that into the police. It could be important evidence. Considering the police think my mom is the Dean's murderer, I certainly won't be handing it over to them. But what if they ask me about it? Just pretend you didn't know about it. I can't lie to them. I'm a terrible liar. Oh, okay, fair. Blackmail? Oh, I'm gonna reassure. Don't want to be a bad person to her. Lying. It's just leaving out the parts that don't concern them. I can't go to jail. My parents will disown me, and my reputation will be ruined. No one's going to jail as long as we protect each other. I. I'll keep your secret. You keep mine. Like friends. Sure. Now go back to whatever mad science experiment you were doing. I've got a window to open. Complex formulas filled the large chalkboard. Clearly the work of a genius. Okay, she's secretly smart. We get it. What is all this anyway? Oh, that? I'm working on a proof to help me pick the perfect prom dress. Mmm, yes. Use the science formulas for that. You've got to be kidding me. I know, I know. I'm not sure it can be done either, but I've got to try. It's the biggest decision a girl has to make. Gross. What does this one do? I never saw that. Damn! That's a giant laser! <laughs> and a claw! And sensitive. Fragile? It's enormous. I haven't finished calibrating him yet. If you want to help, get him to pick some things up and put them down again. He needs the practice. Just don't pick up anything too heavy. All right, what do we want him to pick up? Uh, something within the laboratory, I guess. I'm guessing the magnet. We want the magnet. Oh, here we go. All right, fine. W where do we want to draw? Up oh. in the box. Woo. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I can't stack on each other, it just moves. So what's this? Oh, are we are we deliberately trying to make a power outage? Too heavy. Please be gentle with Claude. He's only a prototype and I'm out of replacement parts. I 
In the back of Jenny's brilliant mind, a plan was forming. I know exactly how to get out of here. Shoot, Jen. <laughs> Shoot, Susie. I mean, cause a power outage using machinery. How can I escape from Glatt's manor? Um, this, this, and this. Robot arm, it sparks and fuses. And when I lie to Judy Kate, she nearly overloads the power supply. So if I could overload them at the same time, then I might be able to short the power and open the window in the attic. There we go. But Jenny couldn't operate both machines by herself. Hmm, what do we do? How do we make that operate at the same time? Susie? Yes? I need your... Help! Say it! Asking Susie for help is worse than having a tooth pulled out. I need you to do something. Why is it so bad to ask Susie? She seems like a real nice person. I don't owe you anything. And are they cousins? Okay, okay. What do you want me to do? Did we misread it? Mis misread it somewhere? Hmm. Go stand by Judy, Kate. Uh, all right. But why? No time for questions. Just wait for my instructions. It clearly did say cousins, but it was never established before until now. All right, Judy Kate. Susie, are you ready? Welcome back, Susie Blatz. I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. Okay, I'm ready. What should I do now? Just hold on until I give the signal. Yeah, the grandpa thing wasn't spelled out either. It just seems to. Well, we found out that the grandpa uh, was on the dad's side. So we figured that one out. The robot arm strained under the weight of the giant metal object. Okay, Susie, tell a lie and make it a big one. Oh, okay. A big lie. Oh, I got just the thing. I'm wearing black socks. That was a lie. No, Susie, a big lie. Something terrible. I'm just no good at lying. Tell Judy Kate you killed Dean Strousberry. What? That's horrible. I can't say that. Do you want to help or not? Yes, but... Then hurry up and say it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Have a recorder ready. Blackmail her. I killed the Dean? Louder! I killed the Dean. Bigger! I killed Dean Strasberry. Say it like you mean it! I murdered Dean Strasberry. I bashed his brains in! Now I danced on his grave! Okay, girl, a bit too much. <laughs> She has a bit of wild side to her. Wow, that was messed up. Oh my gosh, I'm a horrible person. As Susie Glatz contemplated every bad thing she'd ever done in her life, Jenny heard the unmistakable sound of success. We did it. Now anyone can rob their house. It Off I go. Let's check up on Jenny. I mean, uh, Susie. You okay there, Susie? Oh, I'm just behind her. What? You can't be in front of her. Must walk behind her. I 
I guess the game didn't expect me to walk back to her. Eh, they're rich, they'll manage. But what if it's all stolen? Then they're not rich. How did the power get back on? Wasn't it supposed to take the power out? My mom is trapped in jail for a crime she didn't commit. The real killer is still out there. And what if you find him? What then? Jenny paused. She hadn't thought that far ahead. Well, damn. Rookie mistake. Are you scared? Yes. Of course Jenny was scared. But she would never admit that to Susie. My mom always says, a great detective shows courage in the face of danger. Now is the time to be courageous. Well, let me help you. We can work out a plan together. Sorry, Susie, but I work alone. At least take this with you then. So we can stay in touch. A Susie talkie? Except, yeah, why not? Fine, I'll take it. I also have a genius uh, at the hand. you okay good luck and be careful yeah good thing to not have it call her there's still a killer out there i'll be fine jenny you won't tell anyone about my lab right only if you cover for me of course i'm always here for you how could you hate this girl she's so nice we're going to be best friends jenny leclue i just know it maybe because she is too nice sure Right after I sign up for cheerleading. Or maybe because she has a nose and Jenny doesn't. Like, look. <laughs> if you looked at them, <laughs> Susie has a nose, Jenny doesn't. a real killer, Jenny needed <clears throat> her detective gear. But that was at home, across town and swarming with police. It wasn't wise to travel through town after curfew. To avoid being caught, she'd have to find another way home. Excellent, thought Jenny. Time to exercise my sneaking muscles. Sneaky, sneaky. On a glass roof. Whoa, okay. Why, why the jump? Oh. There's a clue. Awesome. That's too high. Ah, yes, they're snoring. I can hear it. Jenny paused at the edge of the roof, her teeth chattering in the chill wind. Below her, Lake Nowhere glowed eerily in the darkness. From this vantage point, she could see all the way to the lighthouse in the center of the lake. Such spectacular it was a bit delayed, yeah. If I cross the lake, it's just a short stroll through the Forgotten Forest to my house. But navigating the lake at night was not an easy task. Many accomplished sailors had met their doom on the ragged rocks of Bear Claw Bend. Well, I've already worked out a way across. Time to get off this roof before someone spots me. Oh yeah, totally ninja. Oh shit! Damn it! Think fast, Jenny. Fall. Just like that, Jenny was gone. Her first great adventure cut short before it had begun. Man, she thought fast. Uh, I'm right here. Just hanging around.
Hmm. What about the other side? Well, the power just came back from the very beginning. All right, good night, Kevin. Oh, now I can run. I want to see what's over here. I might be finding some other clues. Oh, the crystal thing. Oh, there. I knew it. Almost completing that the postcard thing. That's the way to Main Street. I can't risk being caught by the sheriff or his goons. The safest way home is across the lake. Risk it, boy. I mean, girl. Whoops. Wow, I knew there would be more clues here. Hell yeah. <laughs> risk it, chigged. Ch Check everything. Yes, I knew it. Wait, where is it? Oh, there. It's just a postcard achievement unlocked. Oh, I got everything. Uh, here's the stars. That's for oh. This. That one's there. That one's here. Bam! Oh, there's three more? Damn. I, I guess that really shows us we're not even halfway through the game then. Nice. Flip. Ooh, look at this! Hi mom, summer camp is going great. We took a field trip to the observatory last night. I've never seen so many stars. Ricky knew all the constellations. He's so smart and super cute. And he held my hand. Don't worry, he's only two years older than me. Please don't tell that. I love you all so much. Love, Stella. Alright, cool. Why was that ripped off? And multiple places. Is this the first case, isn't it? I don't... Well, I guess so. I didn't know it was a series. Premarital hand-holding! I guess that's why it was ripped apart. What's that sound? That sound of... Oh! True believer. I am the one you seek. I swim in the shadows of giants that stir beneath an eerie silence. Follow the path, reach the truth. What a curious and cryptic message. Was it meant for her? And who had written it? Friend or foe? Huh, all right. This could be from the killer. Why would he give you clues? But it was far too dangerous to find out. I have to find out. And so she decided to ignore the message and carry on to her house. There's no way I'm ignoring the case of the mysterious message. I like he's like tried to go against the story he's telling. A oh, journal update. Making our way home after curfew requires sneakiness. 
blah blah blah, the case of the mysterious message. True believer, blah blah blah, must be a clue, could be from the Dean's real killer. Why would he send you clues? Unless he wants to be caught? Alright, Susie, let's go. Unless... Alright, it's fine. Let's go there, yes, bare feet. Susie. A gift from Susie's father as a thank you for preparing his lunch one day. Ah, rich people. This will get me across the lake in no time. Unfortunately, the boat didn't belong to her. I mean, she's gonna steal it. I'll just borrow it for a couple of hours. Oh, sorry. They won't even notice it's gone. Borrow. But borrowing something without asking first was just stealing. It's always easier to ask for forgiveness than wait for permission. Of course, the boat needed a key. Jeez, nobody trusts anyone these days. Well, of course. I mean, look at yourself. There must be some other way to start the engine. Oh, here we go. I bet I can hotwire the boat if I get this panel off. Risk of electric shock. It was far too dangerous. I love danger. Oh, a sticker. I thought it was a tool. I didn't know I have a tool, but hey, I'll take it. Damn, this one's stuck. Foiled at the last moment by a rusty screw. Oh well, time to turn back. There's only one screw left. I can just pry the panel back. And so she very carefully pulled on the panel. I'm doing it very carefully. I'm tapping slowly. Why won't the game listen to me? Wow, looks complicated. Far too complicated for a child to even attempt. Mom always says a great detective focuses on the solution, not the problem. It looks like I can bypass the ignition by turning the dials until all the lights are illuminated. Piece of cake. Oh, it's like that. Okay, I was wondering what the heck it was all. Let's see here. I need to somehow make it all three light up. Why doesn't this light up? Oh, because that one's not illuminated. Let's try like this. Yes, just as I planned. All according to Keikaku. Jenny had found a way I figured that one out. But she was still a long way from home. <coughs> <coughs> she pulled out her journal and plotted a course. Okay, where are we? First, I'll navigate my way around Skull Island. Next, I'll sail up the river to the Almasdan Bridge. Then it's just a short stroll through the Forgotten Forest. And finally, home. <laughs> Spin dials. Let's go. <laughs> Profit. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the strategy I went with. <laughs> I just happened to find the correct them really fast. Jenny had never crossed the lake after dark. Come to think of it, she'd never even driven a boat before. She thrust the throttle forward and felt a cool wind whip through her hair. Sneaking around after curfew had its benefits. Watch her crash the boat into something because she doesn't know. To oh, here we go. I'm controlling it. Man, this is easy. Uh, steering a boat has never been easy before. Oh! Oh, that's how you control it. 
All right, there we go. I knew it. We can't crash it. It's not our boat. Exactly. Oh, and here's a new uh, postcard. All right. We need to explore everything so we can get all the hidden, hidden stuff. Oh, I knew it. Fish! Looks like a shark. So, the, the, uh, the controls are directional, not tank controls. It's like, if I point the stick to the right, it looks right. Not turning right. Just so you know how I control this thing. Can I go this way? There's some secret this way. And I'm gonna find it. Oh, I knew it. Where could it be? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Gallery item. Got. I think I'm going the right way. Oh, what's this? I am here. Oh, I didn't get to the fishing area. So I'm going the right way. I want to see what's up here. I'm gonna see the fishing area. Ooh. That's probably an achievement for doing this. Aha! Success. Shadows of giants. This must be the place. Oh shit. There we go. <clears throat> Whoa, that was huge. I have to get a closer look. Yes, good. Grab on. Do I just wait for the big one to come, or...? There is the big one. Ooh! The elusive red herring. A rare and fantastic sight. I can't believe they really exist. Jenny had always believed they were a fisherman's tale, but seeing them firsthand... She's so beautiful. But what was stuck in her scales? How do light do that? A shiny Gyarados. A message in a bottle. Curious. And the voice of reason. The voice of reason. I walk amongst the sunken ships that once sailed through the glowing mist. It's another clue. 
This case just got more... Dangerous. Jetty had no idea who was behind these messages. This could be an elaborate trap. Or it could be the answer I need to prove my mom's innocence. The best course of action was to go back and get help from an adult. No, I have to see where this leads. On my own. Like he's discussing this with like a narrator. <laughs> <laughs> like sunken ships glowing mist that should be easy to spot no oh. thanks fishies all right let's see if i'm smart enough to figure it out Woo! can we see the gallery oh yeah i can oh shit there's a lot uh let's start here Oh, it's like art! Like, actual gallery art. That's nice. Fisara tog sig ens from the at one on a ater space horror game right. It sounds so silly, like broken Danish. Fish are those things from the one underwater space horror game, right? Yes! That's nice. We can look at the art uh, when we complete the game. Does my boat have like a health bar or something? Hmm. The shallow grey water. It's on the way. Not really clues if the the goal is actually on the way. All right, just need to find the right ones. Like low visibility. That's like the misty stuff. So past this. This is what it reminds me of fucking micro machines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, low visibility. That's where we're going. I can't see a thing. I must be heading in the right direction. Can you even crash the boat? It kind of slows down on its own. I'm not controlling the the boat speed itself. Is there something here? I knew it. Pick up sticker! Ooh, sandwich! Yum, 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 yum. Kenta has awoken because his food, uh, his auto feeder activated and he ran for it. Yeah, like 10 minutes ago. Jenny navigated carefully through the thick fog. Oh, it smells like rotten fish. Many ships had lost their bearings here, grounded on the ragged rocks, swallowed by the lake. Maybe I could shed some light on these ghost ships. All right, here's a... Yo, man, these ghost ships sounds like they're breathing. Oh, I missed. We're not. She gets sidetracked because of the clues. 
That's why the narrator's like, no, you went straight home. I was like, no, I want to see who this message came from. So she's basically getting sidetracked. Oh, there's a bottle here. Another message. This is starting to feel like a wild goose chase. I am the hope in I sit in a spiral of ancient stone. Against the clock, I move alone. What's with all these cryptic messages? And where are they leading? I should get out of here before I turn into a ghost. Ghost? Yo, man, I better grab some Scooby Snacks to get my courage back up. Ugh, I know what that is. These cryptic messages is like, kind of like, oh, it's a mystery, but it's kind of very linear. Uh, on a linear path here. <laughs> Oh, sure, you can go to the other places first, but... Oh! There's no, like, backtracking or anything. <clears throat> Phew! Made it out alive. Let's go find this spiral of ancient stone. We're gonna see here, we went... Started here. Fishing area. Low visibility. And the next one is up here. <clears throat> and the next one is probably in here or here. And last one is here. Because we need to go this way, I think. Yeah. And we need to go to the spiral thing first. Damn, I have for, for sure there would be a clue there. So someone questioned if I can crash even. No. Ah, don't get caught! Skull Island, home to an abandoned lighthouse and an excellent sandwich shop. Whoa, that can't be good for the boat. Oh, it's abandoned, it's cool. Oh, they got me an achievement. Bumper boats. Nice. Sure is fun to hit stuff. It's all good, B -b baby. So I can crash. Yo, man, when they get their boat back, it's gonna be full of bumps and shit. Alright, here's the spiral. Gallery! Oh, Ken is meowing. It's like, Daddy, stop playing game and play with me! <laughs> How long have I been streaming? Almost five hours. Holy shit. This game is good. Yo, it's 420. The night grew dark and eerie. <clears throat> Why do I feel like I'm being watched? Well, aren't you ominous? Be assertive. Shoot! Shoot! Ah! Mm -hmm. Fuck you, bitch! Get off the light. Ah! Fuck you! Ah! And watch your language. Ow! Ow, rude! Guess to scare all the scarecrows. I mean, the crows. There we go. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh, they're mad now. Watch it, buddy. Talk about a murder of crows. It threw a rock at me. Uh, 
<laughs> that was not a rock. It was a crab. Apply directly to the forehead. We already checked that one. Where is the next clue? Where could it be? Bam. That's creepy. Oh, there's paper. Oh, nice. Oh, bottle, bottle, bottle. There we go. Next clue. I am the answer to the unasked question. I stand inside the crescent moon. Below death's gaze, I wait for you. I wait for you. This could be the last clue. Sweet. So caught up in unraveling the mystery, Jenny failed to recognize how dangerous this chase really was. Who is waiting at the Crescent Moon? Whoever it was, our intrepid detective would need to be extremely careful. Full speed ahead, she said. Crescent Moon, below death's gaze. It's time to wrap up this case. Your man that rhymed. Crisp audio. Oh. Uh, let me know when it's back to normal again. Oh, I guess that's the first crisp audio today. It's pretty good if after like almost five hours. The game sounds like it's going like, through an actual storm. Yes, let's say the game had a storm. <laughs> oh, it sounds like plane crashing. Okay, that's different. <laughs> sure oh, she sounds excited for that. Still fucked. Uh, okay, when did the save last? Oh, a minute, a minute ago. All right, uh, let's just call it a day. <laughs> and Kenta needs attention. So I guess it's a good time to end. It's also been like almost five hours. Uh, I also like the first crisp of the day. <laughs>